It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy's here. Renee's here. Alex is here. The whole gang is here. We're going to talk about new features in iOS 16 and Mac OS Ventura. It's the end of the system preference pane, but the return of the dog cow. All coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 823, recorded Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. Mac and cheese. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Nuve. Say goodbye to abandoned carts, poor approval rates, and high chargebacks with Nuve, the platform fast forwarding to the next generation of payments. Turn payments into powerful accelerators for your business at Nuve.com. And by IT Pro TV. Finally, you can enjoy getting an IT education with IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash MacBreak for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription when you use the code MacBreak30 at checkout. And by ZocDoc. In the chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your trusted guide to find a quality doctor in a way that's surprisingly pain-free. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MacBreak and download the ZocDoc app for free. Start your search for a top-rated doctor, many available within 24 hours. It's time for MacBreak Weekly. Renee Ritchie has rebooted everything. That's, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good uh, epitaph. I, I, tried. I, did, I started with Earth, <laughs> then I did the moon. I just, I've been rebooting cosmology as I go along, Leo. Just starting fresh. Everyone deserves it. Uh, I hope it all works well. Renee's at youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie. And uh, you, uh, you are working hard to make yourself a successful YouTube host, which you are. Which I'm, you are. I'm trying. Picking up all the lessons that you can teach me, Leo. I've been studying for years. Uh, well, and I, you know, I saw your tweet uh, thread about, uh, I guess you tweeted... There's an Indian uh, YouTuber who has something like 22 yeah. million subscribers, who's declining rapidly, and it's it really just shows yeah. you got you can't stop working, Renee. You just can't. No, no, but also like it depends. Like you, you've known this for years. Like he built a lot of his audience based on constant giveaways, so the audience was there for giveaways, yeah. and not for him, and that's very hard to sustain. I have always abjured giveaways, and the people come to yeah, us all same. the time saying, "Well, you do giveaways." And uh, I say, that's called free ads, and we don't do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but also, I don't want to buy the audience. Hey, I hear a little shorter. It must yep. be the cheeseball-powered Andy and Notco from WGBH in Boston. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. <laughs> How are you? Hello. I'm doing just just spiffy. And Renee, that, that, does, that is a really good suggestion. Like, maybe, uh, I, God, God forbid... That you we we lose you on this earthly plane before like YouTube <laughs> becomes a, a a forgettable thing. But I think it'd be really really awesome if like you know that that message that sort of flashes on the stream like when it says that experiencing interruptions here is reasons why that that would be a perfect thing for and then have like a little button that just basically never moves on your, your head. Experiencing interruptions because dead <laughs> <laughs> went went four oh four on the life server. D E D dead. <laughs> yeah. Also, of course, from officehours.global and 090.media, the inimitable Alex Lindsay. Good to see you, Alex. Good to be here. I was thinking I was thinking, you know, reboot could be the new word for reincarnation. <laughs> yeah, I'm everything. rebooting. Oh, you know, nice. like, you know, like, reboot. Alex, so stay inside today. It's gonna be thirty eight <laughs> degrees uh, and the sun is shining. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, that's right. We're imperialist here. It's uh, <laughs> yes. 101 degrees is our expected high today. Did oh, you see that oh, thing yesterday, wow. that meme yesterday, Leo, where this, uh, th I think she was a newscaster in France and she wanted to scare people by showing them what the 2050 weather would be like. And this was back in 2015. And everyone was was aghast by how hot it was going to get. And that turns out to be the weather yesterday. Yeah. It's not 2050. Surprise, surprise, surprise. We're hot, man. Andy, <laughs> I just want to show you something. These oh. <laughs> are snack clips, a.k.a. conjoined chopsticks, designed... Remember last week, Andy was using regular everyday chopsticks to eat his planter's cheese balls. Fat stack of cheddar. <laughs> but Fat these, stack of cheddar. these, look, they go on your fingers like this so that you can continue <laughs> to type. I don't think... And... Oh, How much, like, I guess I need to do you want him to look, Leo? 
Leo, yeah. how much like Wolverine do you want Andy to look? Okay, I mean, so really. He's already got the chops so in the claws. Planters, cheese balls. Yeah, I'm not go. saving this lid. Uh, it's going, man. It's going. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, my God. Cheesy ball goodness. <laughs> Clean fingers. But wait, Welcome there's more. To the 21st century. Each of those is 13 seconds of your life, Leo. <laughs> because. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm heading toward the <laughs> reboot. One planter's cheese ball. Is Perfect. not enough. Oh, you got them for everybody. I brought you got them for everybody. <laughs> I had to buy. Apparently, you can't just buy one on Amazon. So <laughs> I, I had to buy. Uh oh, here Please. comes here comes some snack clippers. Just throw Go ahead. Just throw. Go ahead, snack clip away because you know what? They're sanitary. How do you, yeah. you have these too, huh? <laughs> everybody apparently in the studio has snack clips. <laughs> Just me and you? When Andy Good. puts them on, it says snicked. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Apparently, why start with little, a little tiny can of cheese balls when the fine folks at Oots, Oots, Oots make a giant barrel of cheese balls? <laughs> cheese boulders. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, now you see, I, I get that's concerned out of any <laughs> container of snacks that's large enough to get my head stuck in. <laughs> that, 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 would be, that would be a very that's awkward like conversation at my memorial yeah. service. Yeah, exactly. But boy, you know, it works oh, just great with these. So let us know if it's better. Is it, is it as good or better? What's the, what's the comparison? Okay, that's an interesting comparison. I might have to try again. Um, it you are looks now to a cheese me, ball sommelier, Leo. First of all, <laughs> does it have an earthy these bouquet? These cheese balls are larger, the planters, but they're also crunchier. Mm. Is there? And these Utz cheese balls are smaller, but they melt in your mouth. <laughs> All right, don't right. don't size shame the cheese balls. Anyway. <laughs> so we're doing. We're also we're also offering. We're also a two hour for for uh, for for subscribers to the uh, on the on is, subscribers the, to the, the, the special one. Yeah, we're also offering two hours of ASMR. <laughs> cheese ball cheese ball. ASMR. Can you hear the crunch? Is that actually? Yeah, this is Club yes. Twist. Leo this eats is, cheese balls. <laughs> this is the new the new show Mac and Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I could double. I could double fist the. Whoa. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I hope. I hope Lisa's copywriting that. One got away. Yeah. Exactly. I could double. T oh. He, here's the cheese ball spoon. <laughs> no, you got to get him. You got to get him a, a shovel. A, 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 a trowel. A trowel. So you, you don't. You don't want to short. Like, ah. You don't want to short circuit the advantage of the chopsticks. <laughs> the chopsticks force you to slow down. Ah. Uh, funnel. You need a funnel and a and a and a yeah. trowel. At what point do you give up and start stabbing <laughs> the cheese balls a, with the chopsticks? Are you, are you suggesting a cheese ball bong, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> a cheese bomb. He's, I he's, love it. He's mainlining cheese. I oh, love it. Stacks of cheddar. All right. <clears throat> <Grandy bow. laughs> Enough frivolity. Let's uh, do a show. But I yeah. just wanted to show you that uh, there has been parody in the in the yes. cheese ball wars. Mm. Well, Actually, no, no, Anthony no, 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 Nielsen had these uh, apparently all along. In, in an in escalation them. in the cheese ball wars, Leo. Escalation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On East Coast, West Coast beefs and in, in, in hip hop, it it turns into warfare. In geekdom, it just becomes, hey, how about instead of chopsticks, we have some sort of a mass market entrepreneur uh, device that can be used to that be manufactured overseas? Okay. How much do you think oh. Apple uh, charges for licensing the Lightning Jack on third party cables? The I've seen estimates of as much as three to four dollars per cable. Does that mm. seem reasonable? I was going to say more. You think it's more? Yeah. Because <clears throat> it's a chipset, so like yeah, it's never not enough just supply. a it's not just a, a thing. It's it's yeah. It's yeah, a, you get a chip. Yeah, well, uh, that might explain why they're reluctant to give up the Lightning, although they've given up everywhere except the iPhone, uh, and I guess some lower end iPads. There's a iPad. Nothing. Those are going to. Those, those are, are going away too. Going to well, yeah. uh, the EU, of course, is moving to a universal standard, USB C, and now. Three U.S. senators have called <laughs> for the Department of Commerce to adopt the common charger stan standard. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Ed Markey uh, wrote a letter, open letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, urging the United States follow suit with the EU. I think Apple's ready for this. Finsta. Though. And eliminate yeah, I, I, I think yeah. it's the, the, I think it looks good for them because Apple's you know it's, it's good to say anyway. we asked for something and then yeah. it happened, you know and we we put the yeah. pressure on it because <laughs> because Apple's already going this way yeah you know and and the thing is is that is that, and I think that the, the, the again I, I I get concerned about our representatives um, 
micro, and this is in the EU or the United States, micromanaging technology because they are digital children. It's like a 12 year old doing open heart surgery. Like they're like making like, like I'm going to tell you exactly how to do something that I don't know anything about. <laughs> like, like they don't know anything about this. I mean, I, those three definitely don't know anything about this. And so the, so the thing is, is that, so I, so I, I think that, that it, it worries me that we've now taken the, the crazy EU view of let's, let's take a, a 10 year old technology that barely works and make it a standard. <laughs> like it's just stupid. I have a guess well, though. I have a guess that if Apple had their, their, if Apple had everything in a row, if they weren't so damn secretive all the time, they would have actually preferred to ship USB-C last year with the ProRes because it makes zero sense to have a yeah, ProRes chip I and agree. a ProRes storage controller. And no, so that to me is just, oh, there was COVID and nothing was lined up and they just couldn't get it done in time. And they're working to get it done because the amount of money that they make from MFI, it's not nothing, but like for Apple, it's nothing. Like it is such a small, yeah, yeah. tiny amount. The control was great because while everybody was worried in the early years of USB-C. They got lightning out two years before USB-C and there were zero quality control issues and zero confusion about compatibility. Anybody could just plug in a, any lightning cable and it worked. It was it was way better for its time. That time is blissfully over. And I think they were, I believe, honestly, they were going to transition regardless of the EU this, or the DOJ. This EU law in the US, if they do it, would be by 2024, long after Apple's already yeah. abandoned lightning. Right sure. Andy, yeah. I can see uh, you wanted to say something. No, well, a bit, bit of trivia. You notice that all all four of the people involved in that communication, uh, Sanders, Markey, Warren, and uh, the uh, Secretary of uh, Commerce are all New Englanders, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Vermont. Interesting. So, so oh, basically, yeah. they're probably they're probably already in their in their other uh, old Rolodexes. Uh, I think that I, I think that it's a it's a move that Apple should be making anyway, only because I mean, obviously, they, if they were big fans of Lightning, we would have seen MacBooks with Lightning ports on them. We never did, so that's basically shows where the writing on the wall was. But uh, the, the only thing that kind of concerns me about it is that I, I did read the letter. And did f the thing is, the, the language that they used was not really precise, saying that, well, we do have a charging <laughs> standard and it has revolutionized all devices where it really is the USB standard. What they're talking about is they want a standard connector, not a standard charger. Uh, the, when you go through, when you go through uh, your, your, a library of phones that dates past five or six years, you do see a whole bunch of proprietary connectors and proprietary chargers. That's the re really big kind of e-waste that was uh, just triumphant. Uh, 10 years ago, not so much right now. Uh, I do think that if Apple switches, if and when Apple switches to uh, to USB-C, it'll, it'll, it'll reduce the problem of having all of these like knockoff uh, lightning connectors that you buy, the drugstore that you buy, like at the dollar store. That of, of course, they don't have the MFI logo, logo on them. So God knows where they come from. God knows how they're made. Whereas USB-C it's, you can't knock them off because there is no way because they, they, they weren't value and va they weren't valuable enough to be made overly complicated to begin with. So it's, it's, it's a good thing if it, if it makes people happy, that's fine. Uh, I don't think it'll I don't think it'll lead the the, the to uh, any big problems in the future because God forbid that there's going to be if I, nobody can see another another connector that follows USB C. The next connector that follows USB C is going to be nothing. No chargers. No connector. Just just contactless everything. And, to, and, and by the way, does Apple get out of this if they eliminate connectors? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. So that this, the, if there's no the connector, the, yeah. then you're not in violation. Yeah. By the way, this yeah. looks like an ad for cheese balls. I'm going to have to put the cheese balls away. No, no, no. Keep them. They do a proprietary charger. They have the same. Get a bidding war between oats and planters for the sponsorship. Who wants to be on the set at all times? dependent on them maintaining the maintaining the cheese standard. If they deviate from the cheese standard and make a proprietary like Apple Watch, they can run into problems. But as long as they're backwards compatible with cheese, it's fine. And again, I I don't have any. I I I want a new format because the lightning is old and it's now become the thing that the one other cable that I have to do because I have so many USB C's yeah. it's mostly they that never updated just, it. the USB C standard. It just isn't very good. You know, like, and so to, to make it a standard, it's not like this is, I mean, it's, you, you, you pick up a cable and you have no idea whether it can actually transfer data or not, you know, and that's and a cable problem. Test, well, that's a, a cable a problem, yes. not a, uh, not it, a, it is, device but, nice. problem. but I'm just saying that, that we're saying, if but, you got, but, if you got good cables, it would user, work with everything. Sure. But the average, I just bought all Thunderbolt. I gave up, spent a fortune. I mean, I just, oh, no, 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 Nate, Renee, it gets worse though. I would buy all Thunderbolt except 
that uh, certain devices don't work very well with Thunderbolt. They have to have USB C. Oh so so it's I get the high I get Thunderbolt four. I have lots of those. Um, yeah. That See, I there is a USB C yeah. video standard that requires yes. not a Thunderbolt cable but a USB well, video. It's which is ridiculous. Lisa exactly. has one of those monitors. It's, it's not very standardized for a standard, is it? No. Yeah, and that's the well, problem. On the it's, other it's, hand, it's, it's though, it is good for consumers that we don't have a, a myriad of of incompatible proprietary chargers. It's really which happened without the government. <laughs> like with, without without any legislation, that just happened because because we got tired because people got tired of having those. Yeah, maybe you know, like it, maybe it consumer didn't pressure. Legislation. Yeah, like we're going to leave. Apple's going to leave Lightning because it's too slow. Like it's not gonna, you know, they're not gonna leave because, I, and I think what's gonna happen is the pro versions will all have lightning, or have USB C, and the and the base versions will have nothing. You know, they'll just be like, you know, I think that's where Apple's gonna go with it because it's cheaper. But but my question is, we it's this is part of the complication of any sort of discussion like this. There's the connector, there's the cable, there's the standard. Yep. Even there, it's it's what you put across the cable. <laughs> then there's what you do with the connector. I don't know how you would fix the myriad problems with uh, with things that look like USB-C cables without saying, well, now we're going to put like a notch on this cable well, that won't again, that, that will create this. I, and now you're back to the problems of do I have a micro USB? Do I have uh, do I have I a SCART cable? Do I have a I don't think they should do anything about it. I'm just saying that that, that this isn't right. something that the government should do because it's very complicated and very gray and there's a whole bunch of things that are there. And once you start pulling at that thread, it just becomes, you know, a mess. You know, like and, and it's just this side. Just let the, well, well, but the thing is, yeah. is that the market has decided it's a big mess. It's fine. Like it's, it is what it is. I'm just saying that, that them getting, sticking their head into it is just, you know, it's again, okay. they're, they're okay. technological children. Like they really are. Like I've I got get, a lot well, of interactions I, I, with the folks that are there. I, I get <laughs> so. that. The, the, good, the, good, the good thing about the EU law and if, the, and if the, if a proposed uh, US law is based on it is that it doesn't say all devices. It really is just here are two or three specific classes of devices that we mm -hmm. want to have a unified connector for. So it's not, so, so if someone comes up with a like an 8K video camera for which no no, no we actually need a hexagonal we we need like a, a Chinese we we need like a like a throwing star shaped connector that basically like 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 a like, the, like the, the, the like the blade like the blade and and crawl where you put it in and these six other connectors sort of shink out in a star pattern inside the device you'll still be able to do that but you won't be able to simply say hey we just thought it would be funny to have a banana shaped charging connector on our new Apple phone just to just to be jerks about it and flaunt the fact that you can't do anything to yeah. stop us. This also doesn't mean that MagSafe is gone on laptops. I mean, you can do MagSafe no. and USB-C charging. All the Apple laptops with MagSafe mm -hmm. do that. So uh, you could have something better. You wouldn't do it on a phone just because of space considerations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, again, I think that that's, I think the lower end phones will end up just being some kind of MagSafe. You know, just set it down on things, and that's just the way it's designed. Huh. Like like your like your watch. We've heard all these rumors. Yeah, your which watch I is hate. That way. Yeah. Which I hate, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I, I I desperately want a connector for my watch because yeah. <laughs> I, I I knock it off my my thing all the time. I just, I it's magnetic. How can you knock it off? They did, they made it. It, it was good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just so you wouldn't knock it off. You Alex, need. And you're still that, knocking it off. That new Nomad uh, charger. Super glue. We have Nomad's going to be a sponsor, so we have a bunch of Nomad stuff. I set Lisa up with the, the base station that does the watch and the phone, and it <clears throat> it snacks on there, and you're not it's not going nowhere. <laughs> it is, yeesh. and I use that on there like Mac break on cheese balls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I use the uh, little um, show title, the little rubber uh, Macintosh that you put the watch in, and it's yeah, yeah. a nice, yes. solid connection. I, I have that. that. I have it. Right, right here. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I love that. So cute. You put the little yeah. charging puck in there. And do you punch things in your sleep, Alex? Is that too personal? I do, I do not. Why do you ask that? <laughs> because he's locking it off a really hard magnetic charger. No, no, I don't like charge it. Like if, if you charge it when you're sleeping, you don't get sleeping data. <laughs> so, oh, so okay. good point. Good I'm a point. data guy. Yeah. So, so, charge it when yeah. you're oh, I knock I, it off. I, yeah. I usually also, charge probably, it when I'm in Mac break or, or in office hours. Charge morning. during Mac break. That's, the, to that's the everybody should do that. It's an exactly. excuse to watch Mac break. And when you're when the show's over, your yeah. watch is full. I yeah, love exactly. that idea. Yeah. You, sh you shouldn't it's not keep like you need time for Mac anyway. break anyway. Like if we're right. not gonna, you don't need, you, we don't want you to know what time. You don't want to know when we start. You don't want to know how long the show <laughs> yes. right. like 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 casinos. We don't want to just keep keep <laughs> them at the, the tables, window. Keep them listening. <laughs> Apple workers at uh, the Towson Maryland store vote to unionize the first. Apple store in the U.S., the Domino's 
perhaps are beginning to fall. It happened at the Ooh. Starbucks, one nice. store, then another, then another, then another. We'll see. It hasn't happened yet at Amazon warehouses. Amazon and Apple both fighting tooth and nails not to unionize. President Biden congratulated the uh, Apple workers. He said he's proud, proud of them for voting in a union. There you go. And then like President Bartlett, it came to a sudden bicyclicular stop. He did, just like Bartlett. <laughs> that was the beginning yes. of the West Wing. It was the very first yes. episode. You're right. He a did. sudden arboreal stop. A sudden no arboreal, arboreal stop. stop. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> well, at least, at least that president could, get, could, could have gotten on the bike in the first place, unlike some presidents. Uh, that could be. Yeah, you never saw Donald Trump ride a bike, did you? Did you? Uh, or Taft. Taft couldn't get on a bike. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Warren G. Harding never rode a Reagan bike. Had a Harley, right? Mm, yeah, he had a Harley. But Reagan had a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it, 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 it is it is good news. The what it's it doesn't mean that there is a magic wand and now suddenly the even that shop is unionized. Now it starts a process by which Apple and this union now have to meet to hammer out a contract. And that now now we find out exactly how anti-union Apple is or isn't like you, you kind of expect Apple to do the sort of things that they did or they have been doing uh, and they, they're alleged to have done to have uh, convinced the Atlanta store to not even uh, to, to cancel their vote but uh, it, but that that's sort of like that's sort of like fair game so to, so so far. Next, what they could do if they really really want to put, to put their shoulders into it is basically stretch out these negotiations for a year, claim that the negotiations went to nothing because of that, oh, the union, right? Like or, all the well, media they, companies they, did. They, Mm -hmm. Right. They they could even they could even say that in the in the intervening year, we're convinced that the the two to one margin of of, of, of votes in favor of the union are now no longer a, a plurality. And now a majority of workers at that at that store now do not want to form a union or they could just simply say that these people have been uh, have been negotiating in bad faith. These are not the right people for us to be negotiating with. So they could really draw this out for a couple of years if they want to or they so if they decide to simply make this into a linear process where they try to hammer out the best agreement they possibly can with this union, then we'll find out that, no, they're not, you know, they, are, they, they aren't the 2022 version of uh, the, the coal company that hires the Pinkerton men to shoot at uh, striking workers, blocking access to the pits. Microsoft said it's going to uh, try collaborating with unions to avoid public disputes. They, they, didn't, yeah. they didn't go quite so far as to embrace unions, but Brad Smith said they're committed to working with employees if they choose to unionize. This is in contrast to what Apple, Starbucks, and uh, Amazon have been doing. You'll, it's, I, it's good that the uh, union is called CORE, it's Apple Core. Apple yeah. Core, get like, it? Apple like, Core. Like, like every like every third Apple user group in the early Yeah, that's mid true. They were all 80s. Apple Cores, weren't they? The Coalition of Organized Retail Employees, which will be part of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers. It's a big uh, 300,000 strong uh, industrial union. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, yeah. Two to one, though. Pretty strong margin, despite <laughs> videos from Didger O'Brien saying, we're family. We're family. Why would you want to do this to the family? Yeah. Supposedly, the workers at the Atlanta store Your have Egan been sort of commiserating. Yeah. <laughs> so supposedly, workers at the Atlanta store who who basically lost in that attempt have been sort of coaching other Apple stores, saying, "Here's the tricks they pulled on us. Here's how to, maybe you should try to not make that quite so effective if they try it again on you." There's still uh, the end. Uh, the uh, NL, the NLRB is still has an open investigation about Apple interfering in very very simple ways, not like really really heinous ways, uh, with the with the vote. I think I think in Mar I think in Maryland it could be it could be the Atlanta the Atlanta one, but. Basic things like, hey, you're not supposed to pull one person aside and try to browbeat them into convincing them not to vote a certain way. You can't punish somebody for hanging up a, a, a union notice meeting, uh, a union notice like in a public, in a workspace, uh, worker only space uh, on their free time. Little things like that. So there's still things that are kind of in the mix on that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the, the employees at the Grand Central Terminal store in New York and the Louisville, uh, Kentucky Apple store. Also are organizing. They're going to wait to ask for an election until they feel like they have a strong yeah. support. Uh, Atlanta says they're going to try to revive that election in the future. But it often is the case that when one store goes, uh, it becomes a domino. I think that's what happened with Starbucks. Now there's 150 Starbucks stores 
that have uh, unionized like, and more all the it's time. Like Canada, you can call the election when you think you're going to win. I love it. <laughs> Did you, who is it? Is it England that's had uh, somebody's having their fifth election Marcon. in three years? Who is it? France, Marcon. France. That's it's right. Oh, oh, geez. oh no, uh, Israel. Well, Israel. Oh, Israel. Israel. That's forever. who it is. Israel. But Israel yeah, and yeah, Italy yeah. have always been doing that. They've yeah. never They're like, well, let's uh, uh, do that again. Let's, yeah. let's try this. We didn't like that. Let's do it again. One more time. Let's do it one more time. A series of collapsing co. Coalitions. Coalition. Yeah. In Italy. Yeah. You know what's collapsing is your internet, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you Should Shaw? I reboot again? No, no, it's not that. I oh, Ra I, I'm Videotron. Videotron, that's right. That's the great yeah. uh, Francophone uh, cable yeah. company. Yeah. Hydro-powered internet. <laughs> yeah, and I think maybe you're running out of water like the rest of us. I don't know. Uh, it just, more hamsters, it, more wheels. Uh, don't invade. We have no water. Don't invade. It's pausing briefly. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk uh, about the future. I think the future will involve fewer CAPTCHAs, which I think is a great thing. <laughs> iOS 16, now I presume you've played with this, uh, Renee. But, uh, and I guess you have to, the sites have to go along with it. But Apple has a switch now in iOS 16 under advanced automatic verification bypass CAPTCHAs in apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account. Captures are yep. second only to the cookie warning in, in Internet annoyances. Um, but I think Google wants they, they these captures. They train AI for free. Yeah, yeah, they train their AI systems for free. Google isn't, you know, and by the way, Steve Gibson years ago demonstrated how captures are completely ineffective in, in yep. blocking bots. Um, there are a number of, for instance, porn sites... Uh, with millions of visitors a day that take the capture from the site they're trying to get into, put it on the porn site, yep. a human solves it, and then they go, hey, the answer is... Yeah. Also, sometimes humans can't solve it. Like, I can't find another traffic light. Leave me alone. I just oh, cannot find another yeah. traffic light. Is a motorcycle a bicycle? Is it a moped? Is a bicycle? Is a bicycle a bicycle? I don't know what. It, I hate Ask me about old. sandwiches. I can handle sandwiches. Just and the thing about traffic lights, does the bar holding the traffic light, is that the traffic light yeah. too? Right? <laughs> I don't understand... And why any it's website... It's like it's a Turing test for humans. They would torture their customers like this is beyond me. And Knock it off. You can't apply it like the Google one. You, you have to... It, it, it has to be able to put that up. Like, it's not like you can say, I want to do this and just have someone say something that I'm not a human or I'm... Or I'm like, you think that you can get around it, but it's just it's the way that one works. The Google one, at least. Well, and that's the, the thing. I think Apple... It's nice for Apple to put that switch there, but these sites have to then say, okay... We trust you, Apple. And I, I'm convinced sites have some ulterior motive well, they might just, <laughs> for doing this because they're horrible. Why would um, they do this to us? Like Google Captcha system. Yeah. Might, might just like verify you and pass along a verify token to the API for the Google Captcha system. That's my hope. Mm. Yeah. Well, to, to answer your question, answer your observation, oftentimes uh, a system will use it basically to punish you for using VPNs or other techniques that will prevent them from ah. tracking you. Where that's when that's when all of a sudden you have to go through eight different recaptures and then they say, well, we don't recognize this IP address and so therefore we've sent a code to a one-time password code to your email address uh, and then we're going to have to we're going to have to log all the way back in. This is why like Facebook has such a hard time with uh, almost anybody who tries to undermine them. The good news is Fastly and Cloudflare, two very popular CDNs, have both said they will support this standard. Yeah. So if a, if a company is using either one of these and the capture comes from them, they'll support it. Well, Cloudflare works. Did you see what happened last week? <laughs> yeah. Were they down? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, yes, they were down. They were down. And who else was down? They were down. <laughs> Everybody was down. They're like it was like Google was like Google had issues. Uh, Discord, uh, it was like a half an hour <laughs> yes. of chaos. Yeah, it was like, Discord it was like, is down. You're all free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Quick, run away. <laughs> Here's the uh, headline. I like this from Amanda Yo and Mashable. Half the internet died where you were sleeping. Yeah. Here's what here's what happened. So everybody uses <laughs> Cat Cloudflare as DDoS protection. Um, yeah. The variety of yeah. things. Discord, Dardash, League of Legends. I guess I was asleep. Um, quite a few. You know, I have to admit, I, I was, I was, I, I have to admit, I was like, this doesn't work, and then I went to sleep. It's just an like, excuse to go to bed early. Yeah, exactly. Crunchyroll, Amazon Web break. Services, Google Services, NordVPN, Coinbase, Grinder, mm -hmm. and Fur Affinity. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> what Those is fur years. affinity? I don't know <laughs> if I should ask. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it, Leo. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think you want to know. Oh, no, it's okay. It's an art gallery for all things scaled, feathered, and fluff. We're not still here don't to do shame. It. I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> just, 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 just no, but safe. we don't want to. We don't want a community <laughs> guideline strike either. This early yeah. in the show, we usually save those for later in the show. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's interesting that Mashable has uh, no links to any of these services except for Affinity. So. Maybe it's all Matt. fun and games until your eggplant looks like the latest dinosaur in <laughs> Jurassic Dominion. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, somebody's calling it a cloud flare eclipse. <laughs> uh, I think that's a good uh, good way to put it. Cloud flare rain out. <laughs> a lot of games, uh, interestingly. Uh, 2K Games, League of Legends, Minecraft, Steam. Uh, wow. Uh, Udemy, yeah. Notion was down. Oh, that would have been bad. Valorant. Holy cow! Yeah, it does. I mean, it does. It does kind of tail onto what Alex was saying. <laughs> what, what, Alex said something earlier that I, I, I don't automatically think that all people who are lawmakers are idiots, or maybe to uh, to, to the next extension, they they don't have advisors who can tell them what's right, and what's what's wrong. But the thing is, the things that get me worried is when you see all of these like proposed laws that kind of make sense about hey, you have too much power over who sees what. You have to be transparent. You have to make sure that you know, that we know that you're not trying to filter out, filter out content. They're always talking about like the name brand uh, companies. They're always talking about Google. They're always talking about Facebook. They're always talking about Apple. They never talk about companies like Cloud Cloudflare that have in the past uh, essentially put uh, message boards and websites out of business simply by saying, "Okay, we will no longer provide you the sort of services that allow you to operate at scale without being totally DDoS." And so, mm -hmm. not, not that not that I think that they've ever picked a bad fight. They the 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 websites and message boards they've decided to pull out of are eminently not something that any business would want to have anything to do with. But nonetheless, the, it, the, the outages that happened yesterday show you that everybody thinks that they're connecting everything through Google or everything through Verizon or everything through whatever. They're really connecting through Cloudflare and like three other services yeah. that are always like two layers below uh, between uh, between you and the keyboard. Well, I thought it was interesting that Amazon Web Services were also down. So that's a double whammy because everybody else is on Amazon, right? right? <laughs> so, and and I, I just want to clarify, I don't think that the representatives are idiots. I think that okay, they are technologically technologically inept you know like like the thing is is that okay. the that like you know tom brady is a really great quarterback but he should not play hockey you know like like that's that's all i'm <laughs> yeah. saying i get it <laughs> okay yeah Mar marky marky and warren i, I uh, though marky's pretty, pretty literate good. Marky, Marky, and Marky particularly because he's made it his cause celeb to be like one of the point people in the Democratic Party uh, for antitrust and anti-tech, uh, or excuse me, uh, more regulation for tech. He's I've uh, I haven't I've never spoken to him directly. I have spoken to people who have dealt with his office before, and they've told me that no, they're they they know what's they know what's important. They know what's right. They know how things work, and they know how they they know their power to break things by by uh, dumbing down a proposal into something that will actually make it illegal to put a JPEG attached to anything uh, on the internet. He also wrote a book called Chemicals Used in Hydraulic Fracturing. So he's clearly... <laughs> yeah. So he knows a lot about... He knows a lot about fracking. <laughs> Mar Marky is, you know, Mar Marky is... It's, he's a lifer. He is one of those, like, guys that if you've, if you've lived in New England, you have heard his name associated with local politics and local, local governance pretty much your entire life. And he, he's, he's not a dabbler. He didn't just, you know... He, 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 he didn't uh, mark up eight episodes of The Love Boat and based on that fame, <laughs> may launch a successful career in politics after that he's he's pretty good yeah worn too uh all right let's take a break come back with more when can i order my gosh darn m2 macbook air that's what i want to know <laughs> soon coming up soon, but, soon. Soon. but first fly dollars fly be free <laughs> yeah really <laughs> Fly to Cupertino. Burn a hole in my cheese ball <laughs> can here. I get you know I've been using this for money because no one would ever suspect that I've there been storing my dollars in here. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Nuve N U V E I. Tomorrow's payment platform designed to accelerate 
your business. You may say, well, wait a minute. I know the I know these other payment platforms. Uh, Nuve? Nuve is the latest. It's next generation payment technology. And it's something you want to look into because it not only boosts conversions and reduces fraud and increases approval rates, which means you make more money and it works seamlessly with your existing tech stack. It's a single API integration that connects you to all this goodness. An agile platform your business will use to add new payment methods, to enter more markets, to meet evolving customer demands, to stay ahead of the curve. 550 alternative payment methods, including cryptocurrencies, local payment solutions around the world in 150 currencies, local acquiring in 46 countries, more than 200 global markets. That's Nuve. And look at the people who use Nuve, Wix, Valve, DraftKings, General Motors, Valentino, Crypto.com, FTX, and on and on. Nuve is the way. Customers also benefit from all payout options, card issuing, banking, and fraud management services. See, this is a name you need to know. Nuve can handle any high-demand peak event, and they're always on approach ensures five nines of uptime. 99.999% uptime. But you don't have to buy the whole package all at once. They offer flexible a la carte solutions so you get exactly what you need, no more, no less. Future-proof technology and a dedicated team of human support professionals that are there 24-7 every day of the year because commerce happens every day of the year. Nuve prepares your business for whatever comes next. N-U-V-E-I. Say goodbye to abandoned carts, poor approval rates, and high chargebacks with Nuve. The platform fast-forwarding to the next generation of payments. Turn payments into powerful accelerators for your business at Nuve.com. N-U-V-E-I dot com. Tomorrow's payment platform. We thank Nuve so much for supporting MacBreak Weekly. Nuve dot com. Uh, some, some big, we're starting now as, to, as people get the, uh, the betas and they, they try it. We're starting to learn more and more about Ventura, more and more about iOS 16, iPad OS 16. Uh, Michael Sai, this is, gets back to your conversation, Renee, about why doesn't Stage Manager work on, uh, on older iPads? Michael Sai, who's lately been doing this on his blog, putting together quotes from a variety of people. He's got Matthew Panzerino's quotes with uh, Craig Federighi, which I thought were very straightforward. Um, Thomas Brand, uh, at least Apple could throw three-year-old iPad Pros a bone with minor software updates. Uh, I, what, now that this has been out for a couple of weeks and you've heard Apple's response, Renee, uh, I'm sure you've thought more about it. Do you feel like Apple is artificially keeping Stage Manager for the higher-end iPads or that it is really a technical limitation? Yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't things, because when they put stuff that's exclusive to higher end models, people complain they're withholding it so that you're forced to update. And when they push it down to lower end models, people complain the performance is crappy and they're trying to force you to upgrade well, by and, destroying your experience. And I don't want them to hold back something because this is where Apple has always shined compared to Microsoft. Microsoft is so reluctant to do anything that every goddamn yeah. PC can't do that they, it savage. holds them back. And Apple's savage, but I don't think yeah. that that's a yeah. terrible thing. So um, the, understand, most, the most damning uh, uh, complaint from Andrew Cunningham, who for years uh, has been you know, the guy uh, at Ars Technica who writes those great pieces about Mac OS, it's not unreasonable, he says, to expect a 14-month-old $1,000-plus computer to support new OS features and he says, if Apple couldn't do that, they should have designed the feature differently. See, I, that, that's hard, too, because, like, again, last year they got pasted for putting an M1 processor in, an, in the iPad and then not doing anything with it. And so this month, they're like, this year they're like, okay, we'll do something with it. And then they get pasted for making an M1 exclusive feature. And my understanding is, like, the M1 chip is a Mac chip. Like, it was designed to do a lot of things that A-series chips were just never meant to do. They never had to deal with. So there's a lot of advanced, uh, like, dedicated silicon IP that's designed around page swapping and memory management and storage control, memory, uh, sorry, I said the storage control, the graphic subsystems, all of that is designed to deal with Mac issues that iPads and iPhones had nothing 
like nothing they needed for that. So Apple never built it. And Apple's very different from like an Intel or a Qualcomm where they never know what kind of device like any chip is going to be in. So they have to put everything into every chip, which is why some of those chips are super, super expensive beyond what an individual or specific device needs. And the M1 has a lot of these features that Apple is leaning on. The M1 iPad uh, with the 64 gigabytes is unfortunate because it doesn't have enough uh, storage to do the swap effectively. And that's probably the worst experience you'll get with this, but they just, it's its really hard to say, okay, you, you can't have it on the M1 64, but you can have it on the <laughs> two terabyte A50, like that would just be a huge mess. So they drew the line and said, we're building features for M1 iPads. They're not like, honestly, they're not great features. I think people are upset because they don't have them, which I get, but like they, if they did get them, they may not want them. So the whole thing is a mess. <laughs> and like, I don't know what Apple's going to do because they got in trouble last year for doing nothing in trouble this year for doing something. And I just, I wish wish people were, and this is a horrible thing to say, but a lot of this was based off really like bad um, information in the beginning. There were some quotes that went out that were not accurate. And so people had a lot of expectational debt built up. And then it's the same thing as like the swappable RAM on the, on the studio display or why they think the graphics processes, like they just, they don't understand how modern silicon works. It's so much more complicated <laughs> than like the old x86 because they have so many custom IP that yeah. is beyond what like just a CPU, GPU, it doesn't it, like it is so much harder, which is why like my heart breaks that they've defunded an Antec so much because that th they would give us really definitive answers on all this, but they have like one and a half employees left, and I'm upset about that. Yeah, so I'm that's too bad. Yeah. But but this is like this this is a my understanding is that the silicon checks out on this, and you honestly you don't put Craig Fagarini up on the record twice in two <laughs> days for him to just be called a fool one day later because someone on the internet has a hot take. And I have to say, Microsoft got a lot of heat when they told people that Windows 11 would not run on machines that were equally new if it didn't have an 8th generation uh, Intel processor or yep. TPM2. And people got very, very upset. In fact, that wasn't a real technical requirement because subsequently people showed it works just fine. Windows 11, as one would expect, since it really isn't any different than Windows 10, well, works should, just fine on older hardware. Like we had this problem last year where Apple rolled out the live text feature and they said it's M1 only. And that's because they were leveraging the neural engines to do it. And that way it was always on. It was real time. You could hold something up to the camera. It had zero impact on the CPU, the GPU, any of your processing. It was an amazing feature. And people got really angry that it was M1 only. Yeah. So over the summer, they went back and they built a version that worked on Intel, but it was no longer all the time. It was on demand. It was no longer real time. So you couldn't do it on a camera. And it hit the CPU real hard. Like when you were doing it for a few seconds so it wasn't so but they they did a version of it that worked and, and maybe they could do this too but i think it would just be the interface which is the least interesting part uh, like it's just a fancier version of the task switcher the real interesting part is the swap and they, they can't do that on older ipads yeah, I, I think you. I think you pointed out that uh, Apple's. I don't think Apple's failing was not to make this uh, work on the most uh, as many different uh, iPads as possible, but just not a, not looking ahead and realizing that we're going to have to explain why we are limiting limiting this because that's going to be a, that's that's going to be a legitimate thing for people to get a little bit upset about again if they've just in the past three months bought a 20 a 2021 model ipad that this one wonderful thing that we've spent the, the, the problem the problem with the wwdc keynote is that like apple loves these features and they're excited about these features and the whole point of the keynote is to get everybody excited about these features and you don't want to be like watching everybody like on the parade float like passing you by <laughs> and, and that's sometimes what it feels like if they don't if if there isn't something in the press release something in the uh, in the the the, the talk points for the interviews that they're going to be giving afterward that, oh, by the way, we we did try to get this working. We, you could sort of get it working, but it doesn't work well enough that it would be a, a good experience. And for us, the iPad is all about delivering the best possible experience yeah. to every single customer. Well, and, but I think that the other thing is, is that they, most people don't care. <laughs> like, 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 like these people have gotten um, into it. We yeah. care about it. We pay attention to it. But, you know, 99% of Apple's, uh, you know, they're, they're going to build a PR pipeline for 99% of the users who are going to go, oh, that's great. I, I can now get this thing. Or, oh, I should just go get an M1. Or, oh, whatever it is. They're not going to care about that. And so, you know, people get tied up in it. But Apple's not going to spend PR resources until they have to, you know, in, in that area. Because you don't, I think a lot of times you don't know what people are going to latch on to, to be upset about. Because uh, they're going to be upset about something. And sometimes it's better just to, it's kind of like sometimes I just push my bag through the, through the through the metal detector and don't try to take anything except the computers out, not knowing what they're going to do. Because I'm like, it's too much work to figure it out. I'll just get on the other side and sort it out. 
about. So, but 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 then again, WWDC really is all about like the people who do care about this stuff, <laughs> and not, not not just the press and analysts. Right, exactly. I mean, when I I you, you're right in that you have to always we well, always have to make sure that the world that we live in we we have to understand that's not the world that the rest of the world lives in. Uh, right. I, I was talking about WWDC t on in Chicago uh, and in uh, Boston radio, and both times I had to sort of brief people in on here's what they're here's what the wwdc is here's why it's important here's why the news that comes out of it is important but but unfortunately it's also the people who are paying attention who will then relay this information to other people and like i said it's it's a finer point apple uh, one of the thing one of apple's signatures is communication like about con trying to control the narrative, uh, trying to make sure that they get out their side of the story in as complete uh, a, a way as possible. So it's just a little surprising to me that when they get caught up uh, in something that yeah. they might have figured out. It's not it's a scandal. It's a little complex but. too because there's like three there's three distinct aspects to stage manager. There's the interface where some people just like the way it looks and they could do that. It, it, it would just run under Jetsum, which means that any app under pressure would would uh, restart, which would be hella annoying. That the whole point of running it on M1 is that that never happens. They have virtual memory swap now. So Photoshop can run full, you know, Pixelmator can run full. Uh, every app can run full. So it runs more like a Mac. Um, then you have the, the external display, full external display support, which I think people are the maddest about and maybe rightly so, because it doesn't need to be bound up into um, into stage manager. They could implement that separately. And that's something I hope they do. And I recognize to exactly to, to Alex's point, yeah, only Mac users, like like low, like single, like, sorry, high single digit percentage of Mac users use external displays. Low single digit of iPad users use external displays. <laughs> but wow, do they get angry? They don't work right. And you know, so again, like well, if <laughs> Apple could do that, it would make them super happy. And then the last part is a virtual memory swap, which they can't physically do on most older iPads because a system doesn't isn't optimized for it. Uh, but that's the whole magic that makes this this feel like it's a desktop suddenly. And I think also, you know, you getting into the technical debt of trying to pay attention to the past. They could try to do some somersault to try to make this work and try to make it look pretty or have people have the impression of it. But to them, it's the past. You know, like like it's it is before. It, there, I, I'm I'm fairly certain that there is before M1 and after M1, and yeah. developing a bunch of things that fix something for the, the the legacy format, which is really what it is. Is I'm sure you know. I mean, I I know that we everyone thinks that. Apple has unlimited resources, but there's just a certain number of programmers, you know, like, like I, I love, you know, like, like, you know, and, 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 and they have lots of things to do. And, and I think that it's, it, it, it's sometimes irrational to think they, they, they have unlimited resources to make everything work the, just the way they want. We had an article, I think that, you know, where the guy said we, we didn't have cut and paste because we didn't get around to it. You know, like we just ran yeah, out of resources, ran out of time. Yeah. yeah and busy. so, so, the, <laughs> so the thing is, is that, is that it's, it is, um, you know, it, 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 they just go, well, we have a limited amount of resources and are we going to focus on the future or focus on the past? And m Microsoft spends a lot of time focusing on the past and Apple just has never, I mean, if you're buying into the Apple ecosystem, I don't think that should be your expectation. Well, there's there's like Ken, who like he did the keyboard for the first generation iPhone. He didn't have time yeah. to do cut and paste. Then they made him work on the App Store for the second year, didn't have time to do cut and paste. But also like when they did iOS 7 and they redid everything with this Gaussian blur and they were actually injecting straight into the GL pipeline, which you're not supposed to do, but YOLO, they wanted to make it look like no other company on earth could support what the iPhone was doing and it didn't work on older iPhones and then like Eliza who's a super genius just figured out she could take a stack it, static image paste it there and very few people would notice on older iPhones it's like you know problem solved it was like one engineering uh, weekend but they have they have real real resource costs and it's a trade-off and if someone has to go and do this they're not going to do something else you're talking about Ken Kashenda who is the creator of autocorrect yeah. and worked on the uh, keyboard on the original iPhone, he tweeted, the original iPhone didn't have cut, copy, paste. Infamous, the quickest explanation, this is his tweet, is that I didn't have time to do it right. I had too much keyboard auto-correction and tech system work to do. And the design team didn't have time either. So we passed on the feature for 1.0. Well, and, and I think that what's in, the most important word in that comment is right. And that is something that, that Apple, I think, has to, you know, can get really tied up in is they think about all of these things and how does it impact the, you know, they're not going to just add a feature like a lot of companies do. <laughs> like just, right. just add another drop down menu. Um, yeah, but but they, that. you know, so, you know, adding cut and paste is thousands of hours of, of designers and programmers thinking about the best way to do it and testing it and then retesting it and then beta testing it and then gamma testing it and then, you know, all these other things to make sure that it works just right when it goes out. I mean, it's something that I think that that's why a lot of these, every little button, like people always ask, why can't they just add one little button? And 
You know, I've, I, well, you know, yeah. I've worked in a lot of companies, research teams, and that's like, that button's a million dollars. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. just so you know, like, it's not like, it's not like we're going to do it over the weekend. You know, you might get, you might prep it over the weekend, but it's still going to be a million dollars to put that button in. Mm. But, but it's too bad they can't, they, they can't occasionally apportion the right n number of people to the right kind of features. I mean, boy, it was a super bummer for such a long time to not be able to do cut, copy, and paste, especially oh, yeah. when it was yeah. already available on pretty much other uh, every other platform. So, uh, so I, I do, it's, there, there's so many times I say that, uh, uh, God, I really, really admire how Apple did this, and I wish they didn't, they've done it some or any other way. And so it's like, I don't want them to have a half-baked version of copy and paste, but having something that was functional uh, as opposed to something that was perfect would have been so nice. Uh, but but I would like to think that they had enough problems getting the iPhone out the door as a working phone with a working web browser that they, they could they could basically say, "How about we, we're lucky to get upper and lower case on the keyboard? Let's just let's Isn't just funny, take though? the like, win." They had Ken, and you know Microsoft's Windows mobile team had 378 people right. on the keyboard, right? Just on the keyboard. Well, and Apple had yeah. Ken. It's important. It's, it's um, by the, the way, read the rest of the thread because it's not just about this cut and paste. It's about how difficult it is to do right. touch on a on well, so a screen Ken tells like the this. full story in like. A, like a four-year-old episode of Vector podcast that he was on with me when he first left out. Oh. He sat down and decompressed about a... Uh, I'll try he to wrote a whole book, of notes. course, uh, yeah, about Yeah, the this. book is fantastic. Yeah, creative Selection. Three years ago. Yeah. Uh, we interviewed him. Uh, Megan Maroney did on uh, Triangulation, so you can go back and look that at it That was really well. good, too. Yeah, yeah. But I think the important thing is that when you hear this, it eliminates the conspiracy theory uh, and in the in a vacuum, conspiracy theories thrive. The conspiracy theory that oh, Apple left out cut and paste so that you would buy the next phone. You know that, that this is a way of you know they held back features. People have always thought Apple this. wasn't updated because it was one guy and he had another job for those two years. Yeah, isn't that funny, right? I mean, you would yeah. think Apple had I, plenty I, of resources just, to do anything they wanted, but yeah, I, I think that most of those. I, I just don't see anytime I look at these things with Apple, I, I don't see that they're specifically holding something back other than spending less money on a piece of hardware or something like that. It's usually that it doesn't run perfectly on an older device or it doesn't run whatever, so they take it out. But, I, you know, they, they see it as more trouble than, than it's worth. But I don't think that they're purposefully trying to move people forward by not supporting something. It's just not, I don't think, that, I don't think they care that much about the older no. stuff. Yeah. But, but I think that they, Plus, but it's, not, it's not a purposeful thing. It's just kind of like, oh, it's just, There's that's plenty too, that's, that's of features extra. on their punch list that they can add. It's not like, oh gosh, we make this phone too good. Nobody's going to buy next year because we have nothing to do. There will be right. plenty of things they can come up with, I'm sure, to make the yeah. next phones uh, desirable. By the yeah. way, there is this kind of feeling, and I don't know if this is reasonable, that iPhone 14 is going to be a significant upgrade, particularly in cameras. Uh, so that's the story. That's the story, right? Every that's year. The, every year, though. Every year, I guess. Was yeah, to, I didn't feel. I didn't feel point. like I stuck with the twelve. I didn't feel any drive to get the thirteen. But the, but the four. But I'm kind of you know maybe the fourteen will be. I will say that the the low light in the thirteen is supernatural. Yeah. Like I take and photos the and just like and the wide I don't even under, Yeah, I don't understand how it did that. Yeah. Like it just you know it's it's because it, it's a moving. It's a person moving in front of me, and right. I take a picture. And it comes out right. Well, I also have like, a Pixel oh, Six, so I'm a, I'm a kind of I'm kind of fortunate, and an S22 Ultra, so yeah. you know I don't I don't have to. I have mean, the you only have two hands, Leo Laporte. How many phones do you need? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, I, I have I mean, to I think, look at them all. That's why you know I buy them. All. I, I, yeah, I think that the interesting thing will be the whether we actually get a 48 megapixel imager. You know, I think that's going to be the. There's the, also the rumors that the uh, is it what it'll be an A16. Uh, only in the pro versions, but that will be right. fast enough to do 8K 60 frames. Isn't that yeah. one of the rumors? With, well, it needs the 48 megapixels to do uh, 8K. Who like, needs can't do it who, on the smallest uh, 8K? Who needs? It is, I'm sorry. Am you downsample or you pan and scan. No, okay, you, you pan, pan and scan, scan to get the shot yeah, you wanted yeah, for yeah, Or yeah. you downsample to get yeah. better 4K. Okay. Well, and you're and you're also. I mean. Yeah, you know, we have to see what happens with TVs and stuff. But but I think there that are the, 8K TVs out there, and there's a, as always yeah. a lack of 8K content for now. But maybe yeah, that'll and, change and the, when the, the iPhone the, 4, 4, 15 the, comes out, 14 comes out. Yeah, and and the 48 uh, the 48 megapixels is really good for photogrammetry. So so it's you know if if you have a lidar against a you know you, you we we would go with 
at 48 megapixels, I'd probably rather use my iPhone than a still camera to do photogrammetry because at that point I have structured light from the, um, you know, the, the size of the chip in photogrammetry doesn't matter very much be, if it's good, if they're good pixels. So if it's a well-lit scene, the size of the, a smaller sensor size is actually better because you have more depth of field, which makes it easier for the photogrammetry. And when you add structured light, the LiDAR, to figure that out, and then the unstructured at 48 megapixels, if those are good megapixels, you know, that's the thing you always have to worry about. But if they are, um, the the opportunity to get incredible detail in 3D models is, is pretty good. So again, something great for the pro, probably something you won't see. And, and that could be a clear differentiator between the, the the 14 Pro and the regular one is that you won't have that camera. This feels like some revisionist thinking, though, because Apple's been 12 megapixels for some time, but there were, and, and there still are Android phones with 30, 40 50 well, so was Google, though, because they tuned everything for those. And moving moving to a, a new sensor changes or a new camera, like the megapixel count, changes everything for all your AI models. So and are we saying 12 say is like the, not enough now? Or well, if, for if years you want we AK, said, oh, 12 is plenty. And if you want pixel binning, like you start to reach the limit of the physics. Right. Uh, and Google was hesitant to move, too, because you've got to retune everything. And people will tell you that a lot of aspects of the Pixel 6 are not quite as tuned as a Pixel 5. And it just it it's going to take them a year or so to get it done. I saw the Sony slide today. I don't know if you saw that. But Sony says that from 2024 to 2030, advances in mobile are going to overtake DSLR. So because like everything like folded I lenses, think we're like the periscope close lenses, to that and the AI already. and the edge computing, yeah. they believe they're going to exceed uh, their SLR cameras. Let's put it this way. I you know, as I travel now, the decision is, do I need to bring a big camera or can I just get away with my <laughs> phone? And increasingly, the phone is the right answer. You already have it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I took a photo. I took a photo with my daughter yesterday, of, you know, just, just a random photo with my phone. And I was like, well, it's not as good as, as, as my SLR, but wow, is it getting close? Like, the you know, difference is more the control, right? I mean... I, look, I think it probably is as good if I'm happy to settle for what Apple or Google or anybody is doing with the image because there's a lot of processing. But it's with a fake, with a yeah. DSLR or an SLR uh, or a digital, I'm, I don't do a, um, SLRs. I use mirrorless. But uh, those cameras, you have a lot more control over what's going on. Yeah, but but then but but you don't. But the, the crazy thing now is that I can take this photo, this portrait photo, and I can take it into an app and change it. Right. You know, like it. So you have control and you get raw now afterwards. Yeah, you get and raw you get, now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a thing. And you get all this computational photography, and there's so much computational capability in these phones. Yeah. that uh, Andy squirrels have never looked better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Andy, are you still shooting? Do you still shoot with your Olympus? Yeah, oh, no, all the time. Uh, because there, there's still lots of things that you can't possibly do with a with a phone uh, with a phone camera. Uh, for instance, I mean, one so I, have, I haven't been back to uh, Comic Cons uh, since uh, since before the event, so I haven't been able I, have, I haven't been able to shoot com, uh, cosplay, haven't been able to shoot roller derby, uh, but I have started shooting the curtain calls at the Met Metropolitan Opera, and those are the, oh, I've seen your dark, images. Uh, yeah, talk yeah. about a, a dark room, and you need a really good long reach lens, and you all also need the ability to make, as you say, exactly the adjustments you need to make, not only make them, but also make them on the fly as you go. That's just not possible. But the thing, but the thing is, like very few people are trying to get a good portrait of, of, uh, of, 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 of Joyce DiDonato, like taking a bow at the end of Cinderella. They just want to get a snapshot of the stage uh, and that will work just fine. The other complaint I could make is that, well, gee, I've had, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, been able to, uh, when I take pictures with my with even my micro four thirds camera which is a smaller sensor than uh, most mirrorless cameras uh, the difference is absolutely palpable when I print them at uh, any sort of a really nice uh, wall hanging size but even then I mean the the one time that I uh, entered a, gal a a juried competition at a gallery uh, and got into the got into the gallery show was with a, a photo I took with my iPhone 7 and <laughs> and, and printed at printed at like Isn't 11 by, like, yeah. 14 by whatever so, yeah. And the other, the last thing is that, like, even if someone like me is like, oh, well, geez, it's not really photography, it's <laughs> because it's a phone. But the thing is, uh, if I'm, if I, if I am gonna, if I am really gonna say that, oh, well, it doesn't have the detail, doesn't have the resolution, I can buy AI-based tools for like fifty to hundred dollars that will upscale, upsample 
denoise and basically turn this into exactly the sort of picture that I would have ever dreamed it to be. So, yeah, I mean, for most people, I, mean, I used to, at, at, at Comic-Cons, I used to have, like, on a good day, I used to have, like, the the, the, the dual holster sort of uh, approach where I'd have the one camera with a long lens for, like, taking pictures, like, at, uh, at panels, then the other one with a short lens for the portrait lens for taking pictures of cosplayers. And now, if I need a short lens, I will usually just take out my phone because it will do a really, really good job. Yeah, and, and I think that for me, it's... <laughs> It's the location data. Like, like I. That's true uh, too. Yeah. I look at. I, yeah. I pick up an SLR and I go. I'm never going to find this photo. Like, I'm never going to like. like I'm I, never gonna I find miss this photo again. Uh, my night. My Canon 5D Mark IV had a GPS built in, but most of my cameras, none of the Sony's do. Exactly. Yeah. And and, and it's just so frustrating because I I I use location in photos so often. Yeah. That it's like you know I just type in oh Washington D.C. and I right. have thousands of photos that I shot right. in Washington D.C. Yeah. Right. That's how I find everything. And right. so so like me looking at SLR like I have all these SLR photos that are you know in, in a library that I can't you know find mm. anything. Yeah. You know. So. Although. Although you have to say, at least with I, I, I use uh, Google Photos as one of my backups, and it is just stunningly good at saying, uh, I'll pick a, gee, a picture of a squirrel with water in the background on a cloudy day, and it will find, I will, it, it's it amazing, will find exactly it? the picture yeah. that I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, and, and Dolly will make it for you if it can't. But it's even better if you have location. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm with uh, uh, Alex because uh, you might have 100 shots that you took in, uh, at, in the Washington Monument. And you might be able to find some of them by typing in Washington Monument, but you're going to find all of them by location. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's and I, I love. I just love looking at the map and looking at all these little photos. All oh, I love the that world too. That taken, you yeah. Know, yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. Sigh. Undisclosed. <laughs> well, undisclosed. Well, I got, no, I got, what see, Alex's phone must look like undisclosed. Yeah. Undisclosed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Photog photography is so many different categories and so many that's aspects. Right. Just 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 the, just the other day. Uh, I was just, I wasn't even really trying to organize my, my Google Photos library, but I just, uh, I, I think I've, yeah, no, I was looking for the, uh, uh, I was looking for a picture on the vaguest of terms. I said, oh, I know that I put this stuff on, on a tabletop. So I just did a search for tabletop. And after th scrolling three or four times, I did find the picture I was looking for. But the thing is, it's kind of fun to just, how about just do a search for coffee and just see just yes. see, go, go, go take a trip through your through the past five to ten years of your life and these random incidents in which coffee was somewhere a part of the thing it's not even a theme it's just that it's a way to resurface pictures that you haven't really thought about uh, and it's really such a wonderful thing this is, this is why photography is about so much more than hey I've got a medium format camera and I had a professional model in studio lighting really a, a phone and, a, and an AI system that could retrieve any photo that you want uh, uh, on the on the slightest whim is as powerful as any Hasselblad ever was when it comes to enjoying pictures and sharing them and making use of them because if you if it stays in your library it's good to nobody. I also think that uh, there's no doubt that any camera phone today is better than the camera that say Henri Cartier Bresson had. But, yeah. <laughs> <How dare. laughs> but <laughs> you know, exactly. Ansel Adams is rolling over. It's the photographer, you, not the camera. Get, you know? It's it's all about the decisive moment for yeah. Henri Cartier yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, I wonder what he would have done with an iPhone, you know, <laughs> but uh, <Yeah. laughs> nevertheless, well, you know, I, the, one of the things that really put my head straight or at least uh, uh, solidified a lot of my thoughts was somebody on some board who a, photo on a professional photographer's board who said, look, if you're, if you're going to be sniffy about like uh, the quality of, a of an SLR versus uh, versus a phone camera, realize that in Times Square, if you take a look at the pic, uh, look at time, uh, the advertisements in Times Square in 1982, these huge photos of models were taken with 35 millimeter cameras right. with crappy lenses, with, with crappy, uh, r relatively and crappy grainy film. Grainy film. Yeah. And yet, and yet, it was made. It, it was made into this big, big, huge 80 foot by yeah. 200 foot print. Yeah. So don't get all snippy about how it's, <laughs> it's not technically possible for bad film to create great prints. This uh, Bres Cartier Bresson print is. Uh, Forty-two thousand dollars. If anybody, uh, yeah. and it's you know what, it's worth it. <laughs> Less than a, more than a bitcoin now. I wish I could afford it. Yeah, you need two bitcoins to buy this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you uh, follow any of Apple's uh, camera team on Instagram, you can see like what they're capable of getting out of these things, and it's just like, okay, no one needs to photograph that again. It's fine. Iceland's been done. 
like car walls have been done. It's fine. Okay, whatever. Talk to I, I, I have to say, I felt that way last time I was in Paris. I was going to go to the Eiffel Tower. I thought, should I bring a camera? And I thought, what can I take? What picture of the Eiffel Tower could I see? But I go, I go, like I go. You can't take photographs because yeah, it's copyrighted. Uh, you it's can do it for yeah, in, personal use. You know? Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 funny, the funny thing is I when I go, I actually take all the photos. And I actually will go to a travel manual, like photos or, or whatever. Or I this? take pictures. <laughs> and I and I triangulate the position and the date, time of day of the photos that I really like. And then I go to those, you know, like, and I got to tell you, the hardest one is actually um, in Angkor Wat. There's one, there's a three foot, there's a three foot square basically on the other side of one of the, one of the pools that sits in front of the main temple. That's the only place to take the photo. Everybody takes everything. the picture from there. And yeah. Yeah. So there's, so the funny thing is, is that you show up at 445 in the morning and, uh, you show up at 445 in the morning and you just hope that, uh, it's like if, if it's someone who's Cambodian at 445, you know, you're in trouble because they got paid to find to get to that spot. <laughs> and they're and they're younger and faster than you are. And so you're not going to get it. This but the, otherwise, by the way, this is the picture because I know because there's 8000 of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that's the that's the photo. It, you literally the, you can there's a three foot square on that leg that, that is where you have to be to take that photo. Oh, no, that's yeah. the other side. The, oh, that's the other side? side. The, yeah, there's oh, another okay. one on the other side. Anyway, so the, um, anyway, I've, I've shot a lot there. And, you know, and so you the, know your anchor um, or what. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the other side. That is actually where everybody sit, stands. So there's like 2000 people on one side of the road and, and then there's like 200 on the that's other. Hysterical. And and it's like, and, and anyway, but the, the funny thing is, is that, so I with all over, especially Angkor Wat, that's how, I, this is how I got into it, is I would go around Angkor Wat and buy in Temple and, and I was trying to figure out the best play, photo and so I just looked at the tourist things and I go, oh, I like that photo. I like that photo. I like that photo. And I know where that is. And then I go and I take those photos. And now I do it all the time. Like if, I, if I'm going to a new city, I'll look at photos that I like of that city and then I'll go find them and take pictures. And someone asked me, they're like, why do you do that? Someone already took them. I was like, yeah, but the one I took is mine. That's true. <laughs> like, you know, like, like, you know, like I don't That's have any copyright true. issues. Exactly. So if I want to ever well, I, use that photo somewhere, I can, you know. Mine. They yeah. Just did. yeah, they did. Well, but, but not just, but not just that. Like, I still uh, there. I was at a, uh, I was at the Mac Tech conference in LA, uh, and the organizers are they they will, they will always organize these amazing like field trips. They, we went to uh, the, the the museum that had uh, the, the the space shuttle in it. We had the place all to ourselves all night. Mm -hmm. And one of the and one of the other attendees who was I, I, he was German. This this is a this is a character trait that of that I seem to associate with people I've met on at conferences who are German who are like, but why, but why are you taking pictures of the space? It's been photographed so many times. Why do you, why do you need to take a picture of it? You've seen it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it was hard to, it was hard to explain that. Well, a, just like you said, it will be my picture. And I'm not just talking about my, my, I, my intellectual property, but it will reflect this moment that I had in front of this thing. Right, right. But also part of the fun of photography is to say, okay, I've got the obvious picture. I'm going to keep walking around until I find something that I don't think I've seen before. And I took, I managed to take one of my, actually with a, a, another phone, another phone camera picture with the uh, Nokia 1020, the, Lumi, the, the that really cool. I was thinking first, about that one, the 41 right. megapixel Lumia yeah. 1020. Right, right. Yes. That was so and, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm walking around and I see that the, you see all the, t all the thermal tiles on the bottom of a, a bottom of the wing, one of the alien, one of the uh, ailerons was like lifted a little bit, so there's a gap. And you could just see like the stars and stripes behind it. So I took this yeah. photo I really, really like of just this black field with just this one burst of color behind it. And that, that's 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 I always tell I always tell myself whenever I'm I go for a photo walk, it's my favorite thing to do when I have a day off, like and I'm traveling on businesses. I've I, there are some really great pictures hidden here somewhere. It's my job to go yeah. out and find them. And that's well, and, the, and the I greatest Easter egg hunt. And, and again, when you're outside, it's never the same photo because it's a different time of day. Different, right. I mean, or not, yeah. even if it's the same time of day, it's a different different sky. You know, it's a different like I when I'm in Cambodia, I've gone every single day to Angkor Wat, take that same photo yeah. over and over again, and the same video the because every different. day, yeah, it's a little different. Sometimes a good day, sometimes a bad day, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's you know whatever it is. And um, you know, like and, and the, by the way, just the, the the tip for you, someone who's been to Rome a couple, a couple times. First thing in the morning. Oh yeah, the yep. early morning, morning light. Morning. Don't wait till golden hour. No, 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 yeah. no time to get the sunrise. I had, as, Nobody's in the way. A, if, yeah. If, if you want to get a good picture of the White House, honest to God, unfortunately, you can't get now the, the I don't know what the. The, the two sides that you know people get pictures of one side you're way too far away to get a good picture the other one you're right in front of it but the thing is there's a million like the people. sun yeah well not 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 just that but the sun after like 
uh, an hour after sunrise puts the entire facade into uh, into shade. Yeah. And so I, I went one trip to D.C. I was determined to get a picture of my of the Holsteins, my my cows, like in front of the White House. <laughs> and so there I was explaining to the Sikh, the, the very, very friendly Sikh Secret Service at 630 in the morning why I was like setting up this little special platform. And oh, no. as, soon, as soon as you realize, as soon as you as soon, I, I could see the wheels processing. I see. I could see every hour of training this man had ever had. Say, okay, he's definitely a nut, but he. There are t- a lot of tourists are nuts who are not dangerous nuts. My job is to not ruin this person's day, but try to determine whether he is one of those dangerous nuts. We did right. the uh, same thing at, at Machu Picchu because yeah. it's so crowded. The uh, Peruvian uh, Inca. Mm-hmm. ruins it's so crowded that you really but you can get up at sunrise before sunrise be the first in line and then you get to watch the sunrise but my trick yeah. for taking so this is sunrise at Machu Picchu but my trick for making a picture like that which everybody has good is putting yourself in it then yep. you, <laughs> nice. then you know a little tripod action uh, and then you got some. Wait, Leo, did you magic erase everybody else out and then use the new iOS feature to pick you and Lisa up out of another photo <laughs> and drop you into that one Oh, you're such a cynic. Yeah. <laughs> well, but where's Chris that. Evans? A, Have you seen the honestly, thing with Chris with Evans a, where you can put him everywhere? Yeah. Now? Without yeah. it with his yeah. hands in his pockets? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but Renee, Renee was right. In 10 years' time, that's going to be the problem where you can just simply type yeah. into Google Photos a picture of me. Dolly me and this and you. this person yeah. in front of Machu Picchu at but I don't want I'm, I want it to look like it was just a snapshot and not well taken so people think that it's real <laughs> and you'll have that picture if, 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 if you're if you're, and if, me. you're <laughs> if, if you're if your goal is not necessarily to lead a life of wonderment and adventure and 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 constant learning but simply to make sure that at your at your funeral service. That table of photos uh, that they blew up and put onto fiberboard to illustrate your life has some makes people think that oh my god I I didn't realize he worked for M five wow M I five wow yeah. uh, it's gonna be hard I I cherish the He's memories and getting up uh, getting up destiny. at uh, five a.m. to be first in line at Machu Picchu was definitely yep. definitely they yep, can't yep. take that away from you Leo they can't take you that away from me yeah uh, all right let's take a little break by the way I will not be here next week I will be uh, having <laughs> breakfast at a diner with Andy Anako. Yay. I hope. <laughs> nice. Are you guys doing it live? Jealous. You're saying you're live from the diner. Is what I will you're be flying uh, to see my mom. I'm going to take my daughter. Abby and I are going to go see uh, nice. Grandma uh, Monday through Friday of next week. So uh, I will not be hosting the show. Uh, is it hot there right now? Because it's 99 degrees outside right now in Petaluma. It's, it's actually very a very nice 70 to 75 Good. degrees. And Good. enough not not warm enough to go into the water at the beach, but certainly warm enough to enjoy being at the beach and waiting waiting in the at the shoreline. As, as long as warm enough to enjoy a lobster roll, I'll be happy. That's all we'll I get you. We'll about. get you a Dell's lemonade. We'll get <laughs> Dell's you a lemonade lobster and a roll. Bag a greasy bag of clam clam cakes, and I'm happy. There you go. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you want to get into IT, I know there are a lot of places you can go. You can go to the bookstore, buy a stack of books, cost you hundreds of dollars. You could uh, cut, pay tens of thousands of dollars and go to a, a technical uh, school and learn. Or you can do it for a lot less at IT Pro TV. Get the most up to date content, far more update that, up to date than any book could be the best possible IT training, and get those certs you need to get that job in IT, or if you're already in IT, get new skills, new certs, recertified, all of that, and do it on your own schedule with virtual labs, practice tests. You'll always be ready for the exams. Binge episodes, they're in 20 to 30-minute increments, so uh, you you could do it at a lunch break, whenever you've got a moment. And the IT training is always up to date because they've got seven studios running all day, making sure that when there's new technology out there, when there's new questions, new certs, they're ready. 5,800 hours of absolutely up-to-date IT training, the most current content. And it is enjoyable. It's what they call binge-worthy. One reviewer said, quote, most engaging hosts I've ever watched. I highly recommend IT Pro TV, not only to to IT professionals, but to people who have an interest in IT, but no, don't know where to start. Very educational and entertaining, end quote. I agree. These guys and gals are the best. Uh, they know their stuff. They're experts in the field. Their passion communicates. They have fun while they're doing it. Uh, 
Check out the new CompTIA A Plus Core 1 and 2 courses designed for professionals who support today's core technology, security, networking, virtualization, and more. These A Plus certs are the are kind of the kind of table stakes if you want to get into IT. It's a great way to get that first job. It's an industry standard for launching IT careers. You learn about heart. Well, you probably already know about it. I mean, that's the beauty of this. It fills in the gaps and it prepares you for the exams. Hardware operating systems, networking, security, troubleshooting. Uh, you can always get better, and CompTIA's A-plus certification is the standard. Two free webinars this month, by the way. We love uh, all the free stuff IT Pro TV does. Chris Ward and Kelly Mack on a Thursday will be hosting The Future of Project Management. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern. Of course, you can watch it on demand free later. Uh, but it's better to be there because you can ask questions. And then... Uh, on demand, uh, earlier this month, they did all things cybersecurity, hacking your way into the field with Daniel Lowry and Zach Hill. That's a great way to learn about uh, the cybersecurity field and what it takes to get a job in it. I know a lot of you are fascinated by that. And if you want ITT team training, you want to keep your team up to date, there's nothing better than IT Pro TV. Check out their business plans for your team. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak. By the way, Make a note of this thing. Use the code MacBreak30 at checkout, MacBreak30, for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions. And not just for your first month or day or week or year, but as long as you stay active, 30% off. That's itpro.tv slash MacBreak. And uh, there's, the, there's the wonderful Don Pizzette saying, hello. Watch his little video there. And use the code MacBreak30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription, IT Pro TV. We love these guys. Been with them since they began. Watched them grow, and it's great. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey at IT Pro TV. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak. The offer code is MacBreak30. So, Renee, Andy, yes. Alex, yes. when can I yes. get my M2, my Midnight Black... <laughs> Or blue, or whatever the hell color is. My midnight. They said next month, Leo Laporte. It's not next month yet. Well, but wait a minute. I can get the th the thirteen uh, uh, inch. I can get. Uh, I got last week, right? Actually, you probably can't MacBook get Pro, it. Pro, you could order it. Yeah. Yeah. If you could, yeah. I bet the. I think the. You uh, fast. The delays are, are <laughs> starting to stretch out now, aren't they? You no, pretty no, much it was just have to weird. Be like they at... didn't have all the SKUs available immediately for order. Like it, you could only order the base SKUs, and then they started trickling. Like the website was just. Now we know why they take it down, people. <laughs> it's because they can't put it up very well. Yeah. Let's see. If I get the new 13 inch in uh, space gray, let's get the build. No build to order. Let's just get it as is because that's always going to be fastest. June 28th. That's not bad. No, that's not bad. Sweet. That's a week. It's next week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, too. So, so do I have to wait till next basic. month? As soon as you do build, as soon as you do build to order, like oh, you yeah, add it, you can do it, and it's like yeah, yeah. you can have it maybe in the middle of the school year. That's the problem. Is <laughs> uh, you don't. I think you probably want to build order because you don't want eight gigs of yeah. RAM. So no, not when you can get twenty four now. A little tip though: the stores sometimes have different SKUs, right? And you can go there and see what they have. They have. They have base queues and a couple, get like, all not the, built to order, but they the have a couple. Space. All the drive space. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's Alex's it's advice terrible. because it's so fast. There's I don't nothing. know if this one's as fast as the studio, but, man, did I blow it with the studio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get as much <laughs> like as you it's can. So, it's so fast. By the way, I just finally got the Cal Digit Thunderbolt 4 mm -hmm. dock. Ah. Those are great, aren't they? But you're still stuck with, like, two gigs a second. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. internal is what you want. Someone does make one. I, someone sent one to me that you can fill up all four of your Thunderbolts in the back and you can get back at five or six gigs a second if you use them all at the same time. That's about it. That's Wait awesome. a minute. Like in RAID or in something? Yeah, there's someone. I, I, I need to look for it. Someone makes one now that is a piece of hardware that has four Thunderbolts on it. And so it's a drive with their four Thunderbolts and you can just plug them all into the, oh. the back of your studio. And it'll, oh, I have that. It'll basically build a software That's RAID. What, that is what is in the back of my studio right now. It's the other world computing. It's four M.2 SSDs. In, in, a, in a software RAID, because Apple does that automatically. Well, I have that, but I'm, I'm that still only has one. That still only has it's one only Thunderbolt, one, right? one cable. I'm saying you have to use four Thunderbolt <laughs> cables <laughs> no. into it. I'm just saying if you well, want to get that back the Cal to the digit, speed of the I could do drive. that. I could do that. I have four Thunderbolt 4 ports this is what the you Cal have, right? Digit. This little guy. 
from other ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I have. That's yeah. that's it's really become, fast. It's great. I like it. It's um, a little like noisy it. it's because only, it's got fans in it, but it's only got it's still only two. It's funny how when you have a two, Mac two, Studio, a second. you hear the fans on the on the on the yeah, <laughs> external exactly. drive that you never heard before. Yeah. Suddenly it's loud. <laughs> I, I have to say I love that Mac Studio, and I didn't. Get, I got the Pro, not the Ultra. Lisa has the Ultra in the other room. But. I have the Max as well, and I'm happy with it. Yeah, for the Max. Backspace. That's what I got. Max. <laughs> Mac. In fact, Max. I call it Mac Max. That's what I call it. That's its name. Yeah, Mac Max. That's Mac great. Max. Uh, so again, I re I mean I don't I don't know if I'm going to order it. We're going to. I think Micah wants to get one. The M dot M two not M dot two M two Air. Um, MacBook Air. Yeah. You think when? I mean, why did they release this thirteen? Oh, because it was not a redesign. Yeah, the, they had the ch the chassis are all tooled. They were up. all done. Yeah. So you think? Well, you have to put the new innards into it, but you will know, they do it the Fourth of July? Ah, uh, that would be fun. Uh, they'll do it in July. They'll do it like a month after WWDC. So what is that like? July sixth, July seventh. Uh, and I should get next it with month. They like, they like everything Max. Two terabytes storage, I presume, and 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 twenty four gigs of RAM. I don't know if you need twenty four gigabytes of RAM. You might depends on what you do with it. Why not? <laughs> why not? Why Take not? That. Right, and get the midnight because you know why not? Just remember, there's no fans, so you're you're going to be constrained to about twenty minutes of like full load, uh, and then it's going to start down ramping <laughs> on you. So the extra RAM is nice when you have multiple things going on at once, but you're still going to be in a thermally constrained uh, chassis. Yeah. Who had uh, Marcus Brownlee? Had fingerprint issues on his in his midnight air? Aw. <laughs> Aw. I mean, it shows fingerprints. You know what? But yeah, yeah. You got to get, it's really important. I should maybe send a note to Marquez. You need the Cheeto <laughs> chopsticks, and then you won't get fingerprints on your midnight oh, air. Remember all those early surfaces that had Cheetos on the like, Alcatara? They yeah. were just like permanently orange? <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a test somebody those, did. You get those claws. They yeah. rubbed Cheetos into the yeah. Alcatara surface. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to stay here. I favorited it. Got it. Got the little bookmark added to my saved items. Just favorited it. You're going to stay here live until you can I'm going to stay. We're not. The show does not end until I can order this, Apple. <laughs> Hunger Apple strike. Watching. I only have 12 cans of cheese balls and one giant barrel of Uts. <laughs> but after that's over, I'm done. Uh, he's, a, he's a he's a prepper. He's a he's a <laughs> Apple release prepper. I'm in line, man. Will this be faster than my 14 inch Mac, M1 MacBook Pro? Single not for sustained core, not multi core. Yeah, because single I, core. I don't do anything like an, multi core. Uh, Emacs is I, I not multi core. I bet you do. Like, uh, there's there's not that many things that are still single core. Like you're gonna have older video games. You're gonna have some aspects of Xcode. You're gonna have app launching. You'll have some aspects of web rendering. But there's uh, it's Python, uh, but there's not there's not a terrible amount of stuff that's yeah. that's not multi core. Right I now. guarantee you, Lisp is not using multiple. <laughs> Actually, it might be. You yeah, know? script scripting is hard. Yeah, it might be. Switch to APL, man. Get a modern <laughs> 1971 programming language. Uh, I am using a a, a very modern uh, a version of Common Lisp, SBCL, Steel Bank <laughs> Common Lisp, that uh, supports the M1 and the M2. And might well do. Apple says eighteen percent uplift, so they'll be about eighteen percent faster for you. It, it's That's that, not that, a like lot. They, they have efficiency cores and they have performance cores. It also varies because um, it, it'll, it can be faster, but a lot of the speed improvements on the performance cores are based on the the uh, system level cache and the L two cache. So the latency of the workload will also depend on whether you get like five percent more or thirty percent more. Yeah, <laughs> SBCL does support threading, by the way. Um, but not that I'm ever going to use it because mostly I just write things like <laughs> silly little. Why well, I'm also going to warn people to ignore a lot of the benchmarking that's not done by an Antec when. Yeah. When yeah. I'm not going to know how to do it. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So maybe I should just stick with my M1 Max Mac and just leave it at that. Not, not. This is like for travel, Leo. This is like an iPad, an iPad well, alternative I, if you want to travel that, with a Mac. That nice 14 inch. 18% is not a lot. For a single core, yeah. I just think for multi core, that, you've got faster cores, but they're not as many. I like the midnight. I don't care about fingerprints, and uh, I really like the midnight. And uh, and it's uh, air. It's thin. The it's, neural engines are faster, and the AMXs are faster, but there's fewer GPUs. So it depends on your machine learning. This workflows. is supply Stuff chain. Stuff is complicated, Leo. This is all the <laughs> supply chain is is holding us up, right? 
for legacy nodes, like those little chips you get from Texas Instruments. Yeah, yeah. like the, the stuff Apple's doing. Although TSMC looks like they're starting to suffer towards the end of the year. Like three nanometers not out, four nanometers not yeah. a lot of uh, yield, uh, not yield, but a lot of supply. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it, people are going to start hurting. It's not. It's not. It's not over yet. I was just uh, last night. I was reading about uh, a team that was producing a, a niche computer, but a very interesting one. Who had to, had to once again explain why there was another delay, and people were stealing themselves for okay component shortages. We get that uh, assembly factory uh, factory uh, 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 factory timetables. We get that. No, it was the box. They the cardboard they yeah. needed for the box. They yeah. couldn't get a hand of. And then and then it became like okay, we got the cardboard, but you see now. It has to be put on a wooden pallet, and the German uh, the German depot that puts it, that makes those wooden pallets use these gets their nails from Russia, and they can't uh. get the nails for the pallets. And that they may, they managed to get out the first shipment anyway, but they're trying to basically make sure that look we're not we're not we're we're, we're not like the the coolest the, the 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 coolest quick starter where we're just sort of like not we're not doing. If we had predicted that nails from Russia who has wet waged war on on Ukraine. Rain. We couldn't plan for that. Well, I don't think you could have planned for that either. Well, I, I for think one of a nail, a horse was lost. For one of a horse, the battle yeah. was lost, right? I, 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 I think that, that but. I think that the just-in-time global production pipeline has just been yeah. ground to a halt. <laughs> you know, it's the, yeah. uh, I think that it was, it seemed like a good idea. I, f <laughs> I, I feel lucky when something comes. Like oh, when yeah. that Cal Digit came, which I've been waiting for for months. When I, that came, it's like, oh, I won the jackpot. There's only you know, three of them. back on the shelves, I feel yeah. that way now. Yeah. Like I go there sometimes, there's no pasta on the shelves. Okay. I just got, I just got an email. I just got an email saying that my play date, uh, hey, we, we just, we, now we just shipped out the, we're starting to ship out the group two people for the uh. next 10,000. And then, oh, well, this guy, finally you get my play date. Oh, by the way, Andy, you're in group three. Like, uh. okay. I got the same email. I got the exact yeah. same email. That like, cable sasser, no. what is he doing to us? I want. I really want. And that I, I don't want to say cable, KB, K, baby, baby, hey, baby. Remember, it's me, Andy. I got Remember the Steam that Deck. Time? We got yeah. the Steam Deck. Uh, Mike, I got the Steam Deck. Uh, very disappointing. Oh, George's husband take, loves it. Like deeply, yeah. truly loves it. Uh, it's a Nintendo Switch, on, you know, it's all swole up. No, and, it's, uh, it's it's a Linus Tech Tips Nintendo Switch. Yeah, but you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I tried playing Valheim on it. And, if you've been playing on a 55-inch OLED screen, you know, yeah. you just don't want to go down to that little, uh, as nice as it is. It's a but nice see, if screen. Lisa like, takes you to Apple picking, you can be playing Valheim while you're Apple picking with yeah, Lisa. Yeah, but I don't want to see, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, portable is not that important to me. Um, huh. yeah. yeah. And and so the games it's good at, like Stardew Valley, Mike has like suddenly become a gamer. See, that's not a gamer. He says, I play Stardew Valley. It's not a gamer. But he yeah, loves the Simpsons, Mike. It's up. great for Stardew thinking? Valley, but you could do that on a, you know, on a, a Switch. Yeah. IPhone. But I, I, I got to say, I, I, I played with a friend of mine, got one, and let me play with it for about a half hour to 45 minutes. I had to remind myself that I'm not into gaming. <laughs> that I just I yes. just wanted this. De this device is so beautifully put together for the purpose for which it was created. I could almost say, but I have $500. I could own this thing. And then what would you play with, on it? Solitaire? Yes. But I would, I'd be happy playing Solitaire on this. It's it's yeah. it's a beautiful device. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, it gets hot. The <laughs> battery yeah. dies. In, you know, in well, it's minutes. got a big APU in it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just yeah, it's got, anyway. I, I, it's so that's another one of those things. Oh boy, a year ago, can't wait. It's for nerds, yeah. Leo. It's it's yeah. a it's a, it's a niche device for nerds. But boy, do those nerds love it. I am a nerd. I am not. You know. Yes, but it's a but you're not you're not that like you know that that particular kind of I'm gaming. Not that kind purple. of nerd. I am a no, gaming nerd. Yeah. I want to play on my 55-inch OLED screen uh, with an NVIDIA, you know, card. And yeah, anyway. You know, the thing I'm not going to buy on that new uh, beautiful midnight MacBook Air is Microsoft Defender. <laughs> uh, Microsoft Defender, which is the built-in antivirus on Windows, is now available to people who have Microsoft 365. For iOS, Android, Mac OS, as well as Windows. A little, you need to, though, Leo, to protect you, the people you're sending stuff to on Windows. I mean, that was one of the... Oh, the assault, like, <laughs> yeah. No, that was one of the attack vectors. Like, the, you would, you would like, get the file, not know anything was wrong with it, and then forward That's it That's a good on. idea. Like, you sent yeah. me a virus, you idiot, and you're like, ah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, I should point out that I 
iOS and iPad OS, you can get it, but it, because of the way Apple's written the operating system, third-party apps can't actually do anything. <laughs> so <laughs> no. on iPad and iOS, uh, you're going to get uh, security tips. <laughs> yeah. It turns out that their behavior is indistinguishable from viruses, so you don't worry. Yeah, on iOS. yeah. security tips. Don't, uh, don't double click on that. That'll be eighty dollars. Uh, <laughs> Renewing you know, automatically. iOS and iPadOS are so locked down. Their their yeah, utilities yeah, yeah. and you don't need. And for that reason, I honestly don't think you really need any viruses on any mobile operating system. But that's just like, yeah. just like to literally to scan documents from your team to make sure you're not passing them from one. That's a, that is a good use. That. Yeah. For a long time, I used Clam on. Uh, Yes, it's the name of an antivirus. Clam yes. on Linux uh, for that reason only. Because it didn't, in fact, scan for Linux viruses. It only scanned for Windows viruses. But that's exactly the use cases, you know. I so, download them like once a year if I think I've done something stupid. I run them and then I delete them. Because that's like because mm -hmm. they're, they're so heavy that they make my computer feel like it has a virus. And yeah. I keep them installed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Apple's relationship with web apps will improve <laughs> in 2023. <No. laughs> They're they're getting back together. They've been always, talking. Always like to hear that. I don't you know, know if they're going to get along. You know, I will think, they? You know, will they? Keep they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Apple Insider. Um, uh, actually, this is actually very for me. This is uh, very good news um, because what it really means is they're going to support PWAs better. They're going to have yeah. service workers. Um, you know, this is really a problem because if you're on an iPad or an iPhone, you're basically a skinned Safari. You have to use WebKit. Uh, and if Safari does not offer PWA support, service workers being the chief of those, then it's not going to be a good platform for PWAs. It's not going to... But devil's advocate, Leo, like, is it going to be like Java and Air and Electron, where a bunch of companies that would have made native apps are now just happy to, like, Amazon Prime no. throw out their common denominator no. app to every platform? That's the beauty of it. It isn't like Electron. Uh, you don't have a browser in the bundle. Um, basically, it's a browser app that's saved to the... You know, you can do that right now with Safari. No, no, but I mean, like, you get the same app. Like, all the web TV, all the uh, smart TV apps are now PWA oh, yeah, instead yeah. of OpenGL. But sure. they're still commodity code ones deploy everywhere apps. They're not, like, bespoke to every... Yeah. Well, it will be, OS though, because the experience. controls will be coming from Safari. And uh, so I think it will be more native feeling. It is okay, a window. It is basically a window on the web, except that... If you have proper support for progressive, this is called progressive web apps. If you have proper support, it has offline. You can be used offline. Obviously, not a streamer, but there. But but the apps that can do stuff, if they're not connected to the internet, will be able to do those stuff, even though it's in a it's a browser window. The original sweet solution yeah. comes full circle to Apple. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah isn't that funny? But, uh, yeah, but also they they could they could be letting uh, letting the fox into the hen house because if they if if uh, there, there there might be a lot of companies who are realizing that look we could we could avoid a lot of pain if we stop creating uh, a, an app for our service that has to be downloaded through the app store if we just make through given that this streaming app is uh, or this comic book reading app is inherently requires a connection to the internet anyway why don't we just make this as a progressive web app and so basically we can charge whatever we want we can get whatever data we want from the from the user without having to do uh, uh, the privacy controls that are on the uh, on the app store we can chart we, we don't have to pay 30 percent for everything that we sell to that store that could that's going to be a tipping point i think the moment that uh, the, the moment that it makes sense to Facebook to stop having uh, a, a bespoke app uh, and start doing things directly through the web, the question is going to be, can they collect more information as a web client than they can as an actually installed app that can actually directly access hardware? Facebook learned that lesson because the first Facebook app on iOS was just a, fr yeah. a, fr a frame to the uh, web experience and nobody liked it. And so they did write a native app. They were very famously... Um, the, yeah, Joe he, made it. Remember, Joe the gardener went and made it for years. It was just him yeah, maintaining right. the web app. So Apple uh, will is, is allowing push notifications, uh, service workers, um, but uh, you will still have to, as an app developer, you still have to fire up the permission dialog and allow when you hit the subscribe button. The idea of progressive web apps is you're on a web page. Twitter is a perfect example, uh, and you want to have it as an app. Just like in the early days of the iPhone, you can you can yeah. press a button. It'll now be an app and have an icon, but it's a little bit more smart than just a bookmark to the web browser because of service workers. Yeah. Uh, it can run offline. For me, I, you know, for us, just purely shell selfishly, uh, we've always had a hard, a devil of a time making uh, custom apps for 
our podcasts. But if if you would support progressive web apps, it would be fairly yeah. easy for us to have a MacBreak Weekly app, for instance, that yeah. would automatically download MacBreak Weekly, allow you to listen offline, all the things that you would want a uh, an app to do as opposed to yeah. the website. Also, if Apple wants to, if Apple wants to avoid basically uh, handing over their entire browser market to Chrome, uh, they're going to have to keep making Enterprise happy. And Enterprise does so many of their apps; they don't, they don't want to, they don't want to have to maintain an iOS app and an Android app. They want to make everything accessible through uh, through a responsive website. And so they have to make sure that this that uh, Safari is going to be just as good at Chrome at at uh, doing web apps. Right. Uh it probably is the case as well, Apple Insider observes, that uh, the secondary ecosystem might have helped them with some governments that want them to force sure. uh, opening of the App Store. You know, uh, it's a form of sideloading, in effect. So, yeah, we're, we're, going, we're going right back to Steve Jobs' original argument saying, hey, if people want apps, they can just, uh, we, we, we see the web as the best solution for, uh, for, for third-party apps on, uh, on, on the iPhone. Yeah, it's ironic, isn't it? Uh, Pavel, when the Playboy app launched on the uh, as a web app, uh, that got so much press back in the early days of the iPhone because they weren't allowed on the store famously, so they just made a web right. app. Pavel Durov, who is the creator of uh, Telegram, which is an immensely popular messaging app, close to a billion users now, says we suspect Apple may be intentionally crippling its web apps to force users to download more native apps, where Apple's able to charge that thirty percent uh, commission. Uh, he's actually been um, is one of many developers who are calling on Apple to provide a better experience uh, in, yeah. in Safari. So I'm hoping they fix it. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting footnote. We can I can I can no longer say well, gee, if if on if uh, if on the Google Play Store they allow they allow companies to sell things without the 30 percent. How why can't Apple do it? Now uh, Google has recently tightened up their own rules. So no, I can no longer buy comic books uh, directly through a Comicsology app on Android anymore. Right. So that's unfortunately that's a battle that we seem to have lost. Here is uh, f you know Dorov points to uh, Telegram developers. Um, post on the WebKit uh, channel about all the things he wishes mobile Safari could do. Push notifications is number one. That will now be a feature of the next version of iOS. There's some other issues like text fields moving around, centering, even if you don't want them to center. Um, there's other random reloading, unsupported video stickers, no up with support, no shared workers, et cetera, et cetera. Many of these will be, I think, solved. Um, with uh, progressive web apps. I, I think it is. I, I think if, if Apple really pushes the envelope of, of the progressive apps, it, it would take a lot of pressure off of them. Yeah. Like, well, that's a that's thriving... The only reason they do it, I, underst I understand. But let's. there's a good reason. <laughs> do it, please. <laughs> yeah. I beg of you. Um, let's see. Uh, Bruce Schneier writing on his blog, schneier.com, with a warning. We, he says he supports oh. uh, two... Uh, Senate bills, the American Innovation and Choice Online Act and the Open App Markets Act, both intended to reduce power to tech monopolies. But he also points out there are provisions in there that could be used to break end-to-end -end encryption. And the carve-outs for E2E are too weak, he says, and too vague to uh, protect shocked. encryption. Yeah, shocked. I, wonder, I wonder why that would shocked. be the case in a, in, a, yeah. in a country that's part of the five eyes. <laughs> yeah. I just wonder yeah. why you would put something in care. You just quietly, like, why don't we just insert this in here? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Let's see. There's one that says, uh, um, in uh, S2992, which is the American Innovation and Choice Online Act, uh, would allow a company to deny access to apps installed by users where those app makers have been identified by the federal government as national security, intelligence, or law enforcement risks. Yeah. Which means uh, Apple could, you know, if, if F FBI says, uh, hey, you know, this encryption gets in our way, boom. You know, that's yeah. all it takes. It makes, it makes it impossible for Apple and other companies to work the way they usually, usually would just saying, hey, look, we, we, don't even, we don't even have any data whatsoever that could be used by even us to break this encryption. That will basically, even if they maintain this as an end-to-end -end encryption, they will have to create a, according to the reading of this law, they would have to create a system so that they could retrieve the keys if they had to. And once, that, once the door is open, you can't shut it again. Uh, he, he points out that, uh, for instance, Apple could, uh, could block third-party services from offering 
competing end-to-end -end encrypted backups of iMessage because right now iMessage has a backdoor on the cloud that Apple can hand over unencrypted iCloud backups yeah. for messaging apps. Uh, and they would then say, well, that's why we can't have any competition here because then, you know, you would be able to hide from the law enforcement. Yeah. So. It's it's amazing it's amazing how sophisticated lawmakers understand of a delicate technology is when it comes to removing our rights from us <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to figuring out well, how to how to put a plug at the end of a cable no right. they because they didn't write that part like that's exactly. why it's in yeah. that's like, let's be clear let's let's, let's let the, that's a they very wrote good that. point yeah. that was written that was written by the intelligence yeah. agencies it was yeah. put in in a way that was, looked as, looked as as simple as possible but gave them the, what the tools that they need for this that's what these I mean that's what these bills are about right. Which, exactly. I said, which I said six yeah. months ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, no. uh, but Schneier says, on you know, on balance, he would like to see these bills pass, but these are, you know, you've really got to resolve these issues before they do. Yeah. That's a lot. There was an interesting thread on Twitter where they talked about uh, the reason we get into a lot of situations we are is that you have a bunch of reasonable people in the middle who just assume that these laws will work out. Like they'll say, oh, that's an extreme example. That'll never happen. You know, you don't have to worry about that. And so they don't push to have anything codified and nothing, not, nothing that isn't codified in the law ever actually really happens. So they'll say, oh, you know, it's an extreme law, but, you know, everyone will be totally reasonable about it when it's actually in place. And it never is. So it's really yeah. important to fight that to have everything that you know is important in like enshrined in the law when it is first passed. Yeah. Also that there are no accidents in the drafting of this legislation. Just last week, uh, Massachusetts uh, struck down a, or rather threw out a, a, threw out a, 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 a voter question that was due for November on whether or not uh, gig companies like Uber could classify their workers as contractors instead of employees. And the reason why it got thrown out was because in big, big, bold letters at the top, it said, "We want to make, we want to be able to classify our gig workers as contractors and not employees." But then, if you kept reading page after page after page, uh, the subscript of, of page eighteen, paragraph whatever was, oh, and by the way, uh, our company is going is to be absolutely and completely indemnified against any crimes or accidents created by anybody working for us as a contractor. And well, what do you know? The state supreme court actually read down that far and said, "No, no, no, you can't do that." You can't hide, you can't you can't deceive the voter that way, and so therefore we're throwing out your ballot question that you worked so hard and spent so much money to get on the November ballot. So yeah, nothing is nothing is in these laws by accident. The wording is very very well chosen, and as and as Alex said, it's usually provided to the legislators by either a special interest group or intelligence, which is another special interest group. Yeah. Good article in the Sentinel One blog about new security uh, features in uh, Ventura. Here's one I didn't know about. Renee, you knew because you're probably running the uh, public beta, or am I sorry, the developer beta, public beta is next yeah. month. But it's uh, there's no more system preference panes. Oh, no. my God. How many years okay. have I had to bend my tongue around <laughs> the phrase system preference panes <laughs> instead of just saying, go to the settings? <laughs> yeah, controversial though because it really is the settings app, and it's not like it's not fully cooked yet. And people were complaining. Like John Gruber during the talk show uh, asked Craig, he's like, "There used to be these beautiful animations, these beautiful videos of how to use the trackpad, and that's all gone, and that looks like a terrible iPhone cheat." And Craig's like, "We need new videos. They're not ready yet. We didn't want to cram the old videos yeah. in there." So, so there be will be back. videos. Good. So, all right. Yeah. So it's not but, finished yet, but it is. It is settings, yeah. and not everyone is happy about that. I think but, that makes sense. That's what everybody yeah. calls them. That's what they should be. Period. Well, but but also nonetheless, the people who are writing about accessibility have pointed out that the new style makes it much more accessible when you have a video that right. explains how to do something it's not necessarily uh, unless they cook in a lot of, of, of talk over things uh, to make it to make it work for people who can't necessarily see that it's 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 a uh, I don't know it's I don't know which what's what's the right question I know which I know which way I think is prettier I know which what which way is clearer but I don't know which way is better for the the entirety of Mac OS users honestly uh, since most Mac OS users will also be using iPhones many will be using iPads a yeah. consistent naming convention a consistent look is not a bad thing it's know? a user benefit so, consistency is yeah. a user benefit but people yeah. are change adverse yeah i understand well, de well depend well depends sometimes they change just to be just to be consistent they take away something that works well i would be very disappointed if uh if preferences for the app that i'm looking at right now was not underneath the application menu that i have to now go into settings find the tile or find the the line item that refers to oh, this I agree app with you and then hope that. there's a setting in there yeah. i think that's ridiculous i'm very used to going to the apple menu uh 
uh, we'll hot link you in. If it says Apple <laughs> and then if it says settings, not system preferences, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's just modernizing it. It will be, you know, a very long <laughs> list of settings. You'll have to yep. get used to using that search uh, that tool. That will be easier to find. And scroll. <laughs> it's just going to be way easier to do. Search and scroll. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a big change, uh, Sentinel-1 points out, is now you can manage login items, launch agents, and launch demons all from a single place in system settings. And anytime anything adds a persistent, uh, you know, login item, you will get notified about it and you will be able to turn it off in the settings. And that's a long, long needed update. It's really, a, you know, I think many users don't know, you know, all the different places you can look to find launch agents and... Uh, other persistent it's labyrinthian right it's now. labyrinthian launch demons yeah. log is it a login item well, is it a and, launch and think, demon is it a launch agent why doesn't it show up in the system preference one of the pane nice things about I ios think, is that multiple this. places like if something applies in multiple areas they put them in all those areas like i shouldn't have to like know the one place it that it's all in. Just put it everywhere. be I don't like. well it'll all be, i well, think yeah. it'll all be in the settings and, and I think, did, isn't, uh, didn't we have this in Mac OS 7, like startup items? Like it was just like, there was a, as I remember it, there was like a startup awesome. item thing yeah. where everything oh, yeah. that was yeah. going to start up was available. It's for, one of those things that grows list. like Topsy, you know, they add it here and yeah. add it there and they put yeah. it there and they yeah. put it here and then pretty soon you got 15 different places. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, in terms of modernizing system preferences, remember that in system 6.02, it was a list of, <laughs> it was a list of things and you have to click on each one to get the sub item. So right. maybe we're, maybe we're, we're taking it one, one step into the, one step into the past to have step back forward. to the future yes uh anyway i think fantastic to uh, have at least one place and i hope this is the case where we can go and see all the items that launch on login that will be we'll uh, give them everything huge 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 boot huge. into verbose mode by default huge. you have to hold down three keys yeah. in order to not see <laughs> the kernel loading in <laughs> yeah and there is a new Endpoint security logger. <laughs> okay, I don't know anything about that, but uh, apparently Sentinel One's very excited about ES logger. <laughs> Let you know more about what's going on with your uh, machine. It will support DNSSEC, which is really good and much needed. Secure DNS. Steve Gibson's talked a lot about DNSSEC, so having that built into the OS improvement. Good. A plus Apple. <laughs> Um, I've been for, you know, and I haven't the last three or four and Micah knows this cause he sees me put it into the, sh the show rundown and then take it out wanting to recommend Diablo immortal. Oh, uh, God, I, pre yeah. I, I pre-ordered it, uh, cause I'm a huge Diablo nerd. I love all the Diablo games, played them for hundreds of hours and, uh, and I got it the minute it came out. And, I, and I've put it since that week, which is like a month ago, every week as my... And then take it out of the recommendations. Not because I don't love it. I do love it. The problem is... But <laughs> uh, it's funny because reviewers are giving it high reviews. Users are getting it terrible reviews because of its loot box mechanics. And, and the real problem, which is if you're willing to pay th literally... Hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. You can hundreds be hundreds of thousands of dollars to max your character. You can be the best. Dollars. Yeah, you yeah. can be the best. One hundred. Yes. It's made if for you're YouTubers. Mr. Beast, you have the best character. Yeah, uh, ever. And the Jez from Windows Central, to his credit, wrote a screed about how terrible this is. That this is peak sleazy monetization at its worst and needs to be regulated. Which, if you know Jez from Windows Central, he is the biggest fanboy of every game ever. So to, for them to have done this to him is a tragedy. I will say this, and I agree with Joseph Cox writing for Motherboard uh, in Vice. Uh, he says, how I learned to stop caring about Diablo Immortals pay-to-win mechanics. Um, you can still play it for free forever. You may be beaten by people, but it's still quite... I enjoy it. It's fun. It's Diablo on your phone or iPad. Uh, I'm not crazy, and I never have been. I've said this many times. You say it all the time on iOS Today about how controls are on work on the uh, yeah. iPad where you have to do your thumb on a phony controller and all that. I mean, but that's Diablo. It never, it, it was always designed around a gaming controller, not around touch. Did uh, you see the stream this weekend, Leo, where he, uh, I forget his name. He spent $15,000 to get his first 100% yeah. uh, gem and then deleted it through his <gasps> computer. I well, didn't throw his computer, but figuratively through his computer and uh, deleted the game. Oh! Uh, just in protest. That'll That'll oh, show them yes. giving him $15,000. Yeah, Don't boy. That take again. that. <laughs> take that, yeah. Blizzard. 
uh, yeah, it'd be nice not to have microtransactions and loot boxes, and it certainly would be nice not to get beat by somebody who spent thousands right. of dollars to beef up his character. I think it's just the character. shamelessness. That, right. like, people don't mind paying a little yeah. bit, but the shamelessness, like the $100,000 mark, I think, put people off. Yeah. Well, I, and I think that if you feel like you could work your way up to it and you don't want to spend the money, like, as, as I've said before, like, my the game that I really enjoy is, is Kingdom Rush, and... I, you can definitely buy a lot of things. I just never have. You know, I just sit there and I just play a certain, I can play it out and just start building up coins until I buy what I need. And, and I think that the, um, I think that that is a good m model is that you could work your way up to it. But I think with Diablo, it doesn't feel like you, I mean, you could in your I, lifetime. I think you, I think <laughs> if you don't spend money, you will never be at the highest level. Yeah. But, yeah. but you, I, I justify it. It's still a fun game to play. But I've never right. wanted to be on the leaderboard. I never was good enough to be there yeah. anyway. So it's yeah. really, it affects people who, I guess, are really talented gamers. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good model to make money. Yeah. Well, also, right. it, it, I, th I think it's an obstacle towards people getting into the game or getting into gaming to begin with. The, the, the one type of our, of like of, of, of AAA style game that I like are racing games, and every time I try a new one, it's like, okay, great, I had a, I had a great time driving around this track very very badly, but I'm looking forward to going again. But no, instead of just saying, oh, by the, oh, let's go, let's go for another race, let's go for another run, it's like, hey, you finished great. Now, hey, look, boom, 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 boom. Now here you are in the garage. Do you want to upgrade your tires? Do you want to get new livery? Do you want to maybe you should you should upgrade your fuel system? I said no. I want to go back onto the gas me up new tires, put me back on the track so I can continue to drive and you know drive like a Massachusetts person without any of the insurance points affecting me. By the way, you can now buy, even though you can't get a midnight blue MacBook Air, the dual. USB C port compact power adapters for fifty nine dollars. This is one place I, I feel like Apple has really fallen behind. Like, <laughs> like I would never buy. I mean, I, I buy a lot of Apple products. No, the but chargers not, never the are chargers. not one of them. Never you're you're the kind of like with, with the GAN technology. You're kind of yeah. like I've got so many things that I can plug into of all these different formats that work for me, and I just feel like I mean, I'm, it's nice that Apple makes them. I guess you, you have to make them, right? But but thirty five watts, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. so small. Like, it's yeah. so tiny. Like, yeah. why would I do 35 watts for, yeah. for two of them? To, uh, no, no. And there's so many great chargers out there, Anchor, and yeah. Yeah. so many great chargers out there. Uh, the only difference yeah. with this one, and I don't think it's compelling, is that it's smart. It doesn't just push out raw um, charge through both outlets. It measures the capacity of the devices and then can adjust the relative charge depending on what needs what? something at a given time. At least on paper, yeah, most a, of them are. Most of them are. Most of the newer ones that are, I mean, that are actually a little bit more expensive than the Apple one. Um, they at least claim to. I don't know if they do or not, but they seem yeah. to. I don't know. They charge my devices really well. So. Yeah. Nine to five Mac had the rundown saying that if you connect a Mac and a notebook and an iPhone or iPad, each device receives up to 17 and a half watts. If you connect an iPhone and an iPad, each receives up to 17 and a half watts. But if you connect a Mac notebook or iPhone and an Apple Watch or iPhone or AirPods, the notebook or iPhone receives up to 27 and a half watts and the Apple Watch or AirPods receive up to seven and a half watts. But yeah, I, I, the, the, the whole point of chargers is having one, having multiples of them. You have to have like a half a dozen of them, one, one in every bag, one next to every place that you are <laughs> likely to be doing more than an hour's worth of work. And so if I don't care how nicely designed the Apple charger is, and I'm sure it's it's wonderfully designed, I'd much rather have something that has a more dull, a more dull gray, easier to manufacture finish and have an extra chart, an extra 65 watt charger uh, than be stuck with just one Apple 35 watt charger. Yeah. Those of us who have been using Macs since 1984 are very familiar with Claris, the mm. cow dog. Claris, dog cow, please. Dog cow. Pardon me. Oh, God. Oh, I deserve to, <laughs> I deserve to be spanked for that. Woof. 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 Uh, <laughs> Oof. That is back. Claris is back, baby, in the baby. new uh, Mac OS Ventura printer dialogue, at least according to... To sh the Shadow Facts blog, this is on the left. The original Clarice I mean, the dog lost cow. The character. I think that the I think that the, well, the problem the, is the new one has the, the ear goes up instead of like a little yeah. wagged. Look at the front ear. Doesn't 
swag down properly. That's like my own. <laughs> well, because 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 well, this this one is vector, so you can scale it all the way up. <laughs> okay. But the thing is that I think I think there's going to be sort of like a philosophical debate where is Claris the, is, is Claris blocky because uh, it was because Claris was originally created to be a uh, be in a system font from the original Mac, or is that just simply the nature of Claris to be blocky? And if you scale it up, you're supposed it's to scale Claris, up the block. But I think I th I just feel like there's character there. there there's if look at the no, eye, no, the, eye think, the ratio of the eye to the ear, the the tail, like all these things you could have kept when you built that out, and they. They they smoothed the, those out. Like the tail has still got so much more character in the old one, and it's I got said, you got more resolution now. I'm really upset about this. It's very dramatic the, 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 the blog the, the blog post is great because it does go into like he was trying to they, they were trying to figure out. Wait, am I imagining this? Is this just like an individual programmer who did this? But he did verify that it's it happens. Oh, in it's hysterical. App, does he, not happen in Ma Maverick apps. He goes he also, deep he also, into the uh, app kit uh, hop file, and he, yep, he's yep, really to, digging mm -hmm. through the. <laughs> this is and a very the, and good the, post. And, and the and the payoff for scrolling to the bottom is a link to a PDF version mm -hmm. of the new Vector Claris. And yes, I did download it. And yes, I did scale it up to be like absolutely huge. And it's like, you know what? I don't I'm not I'm not willing to say that this is m the Claris that I grew up with in the 80s. However, perhaps it's like it's like on Iron Chef, like a, on the Netflix version, yes. you don't get Chairman Kaga, you get Chairman Kaga's nephew yeah, I, uh, I introducing the Iron Chefs. I think this is what we're I think this is I think this is Claris's nephew. I think it's kind of like someone got a facelift and you're like, ooh, you shouldn't have done that. You ooh. know, like it was, you know, like it looks, it looks smoother, but it's like, mm, you know, you lost the character of who you are. So, so I think it's that Dolly. like it, it's I, a Dolly version of. Let's, uh, let's zoom in uh, on uh, Clarice, the, uh, the I dog. Mean, there's not as cow, many wrinkles, but, but. PDF. How, how big can it get? Going forever. You can get as long as you want. But I think that they, I think that they, I, I think that there was just some easy stuff that you could have kept there. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I almost, I saw this. I almost up, opened up Infinity Designer. I was like, I got to do yeah. this again. I got, I got to right. say that that's that's probably a much easier Claris to tattoo than the bitmap version. Yes, you don't, that's true. You don't need someone it who's is. good at getting pulling nice sharp lines. This is I, you know, it's not it's not the bits it, that their are black the problem, has though. to be on point, but yeah. the shapes are clearly different. The shapes are clearly okay. different, and 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 you've lost some of the like the face is shorter now. The 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 ear doesn't have the character. The, the I, there's so many things that are wrong with that. That, that yeah, image, that's all I'm did you, uh, did Renee, you immediately well? print something from uh, your Mac OS Ventura? Just to I haven't sure. owned a printer in like twenty years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here's the history mm. of the uh, the dog cow. Claris the dog. Move, bearded. Move, move. move. This is all Susan Kerr's work. You can blame yep. Susan Kerr yep. for this. The great it's her Susan version. Kerr. 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 She's awesome. Cla yeah. Claris was the official symbol of of Apple uh, Mac and developer support. So oh, this nice. is like, they, it used to be like in 1985, like it would be, you would suck up to any like per member of the developer team you bumped into at Macworld because they would probably have a green move, uh, green move pin. And you just want to make sure you have a move pin or else you, <laughs> you're not, you're not one of the cool I kids. I want a move now pin. that's in somebody's, isn't there a famous story where like Steve goes, we're getting rid of everything. We're getting rid of all this old stuff. And they're like, Steve, oh, yeah. you can't. It's history. It's like, you tell them they have 24 hours to salvage anything that they want or it's going to be gone. Uh, and then, so I think all that stuff is in people's garages now. I bought. I, I managed to buy like a, a, a an official Claris Moof watch before the hammer <laughs> fell down on all the licensing stuff. It's and, and I'm now and now it's like there are two watches. That, no, actually three watches that I own that I'm I'm scared to wear. One is the beautiful watch that my mom gave me for my 21st birthday, which is too nice to wear. The second is my Millennium Falcon watch that I bought three of because I loved it so much, and now I'm down to my last one. And I don't want to break it. And my Claris the Claris the dog cow watch because again it's too nice. I don't want anything to happen to it. Here is a Claris the dog cow merry-go-round rendered in quick time in 1991. It uh, each each video took over 24 hours on a Mac 2 FX. Mm. <laughs> it was hard to do this stuff back in the day. Oh, yeah. You know, we've come a long way. All right, get your picks ready, boys, because... Oh, Leo, I have one last thing. If we, yes. can, if we can just quickly get into a terrible fight at the end of the show. Oh, that'd be wonderful, yes. I, I, I was going to say, Microsoft being forced to repatriate data to Paris, Apple being forced to repatriate data to China, and now TikTok being forced to repatriate data to the U.S. Yes. I know those are all very different countries, but we seem to have very different reactions to all the different data patriation laws. We talked about uh, TikTok on Sunday on uh, the big show on Twit. And uh, <laughs> I mean, who do you trust? 
with uh, your data more, the Chinese Communist Party or Oracle? <laughs> I honestly, I don't. I mean, honestly, that was not the twist I was expecting on that hot take deal. That's amazing. Honestly, you know, uh, I don't. You Larry, know, Larry, and, Larry in his samurai suit. I'm no, I'm no I fan would, of would, the Chinese Communist Party, but I don't think they're going to do anything with my my also, name. Also, their access doesn't I change like depending to, on where the data is stored. Yeah, I, I, I would That's like true. to introduce as as a topic of evidence in this discussion that Chinese Communist Party would be the enemies in a 1970s or 80s Bond movie. Uh, Oracle would be the name of the evil company or the last name of the evil guy in an 80s or 90s Bond movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't so, know if that, I don't really, how that plays in, but... I, I wanna, you, I'm, a, I'm, going with the, I'm going with the uh, 70s uh, evil villain. And a ceremonial yeah. cheese puff. I, I, I feel like that moment, that, that, that question is kind of a Larry David moment. Like, I know! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, at All least right. no one will have access to it if it's on Oracle. I mean, that's the same yeah, part. Mm -hmm. yeah. how can, well, well the thing is, I every mean, hacker... Uh, I gotta trust a guy named Larry. Larry. As soon as I found out his name was Larry, Larry. Allison, it's, it's, it's sort of a brotherhood of Larrys here. I don't know any Larry Chinese people. <laughs> the only thing they make it perfect is if he were bald. Mm. Good cheese puffs. Well, that was fun. I appreciate Aren't that, they, though. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsor while you prepare your picks of the week. Clarice, the dog cow. Not the cow dog. The dog cow. Let's get that right. Uh, <laughs> Moof. <laughs> Our show today <laughs> brought to you by ZocDoc. There, you know, I love this idea. I love this idea. There's some amazing doctors out there, but you know, what good is a doctor who doesn't take your insurance, right? With ZocDoc, you can focus on doctors who are in network, putting you on the path to see the doctors who are right for you. You don't have to Waste time hunting down Aunt Shirley's cash only chiropractor or the dentist your your coworker recommended who's out of your network. No one knows what you're looking for in a doctor better than you. And no one's better at giving you the tools to find the perfect doctor than ZocDoc. The people who created ZocDoc found the major pain points in healthcare, all the things that weren't working. They said, enough as great entrepreneurs do. They made a booking a great doctor surprisingly pain free. Now this is a free app. It shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance. They're also available when you need them. All three are very important, but I love the patient-review part because you want a doctor that patients like. We've all had that doctor uh, who's just a jerk. <laughs> no, no, I want to know ahead of time. Read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews, see what other real humans had to say about their visit. So when you walk into that doctor's office, you're set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Z-O-C-D-O-C, -O -C, ZocDoc.com. Go there, choose a time slot, whether you want to see the doctor in person or do a video visit. And just like that, you're booked. You find the doctor that's right for you, book an appointment that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. It could be your go-to whenever you need to find and book a doctor. In the chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your trusted guide to find a quality doctor in a way that is surprisingly pain-free. With ZocDoc, you can get your docs in a row. Get it? Mm -hmm. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MacBreak. Download the ZocDoc app for free. It's on iOS and Android. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash MacBreak. Please use this slash MacBreak. That way uh, they know you saw it here. ZocDoc dot com slash MacBreak. I so rarely have a pick. I'm going to kick the picks of the week off uh, <laughs> this week because I saw a uh, post from Harper, Twitter dot com slash Harper, one of my... Uh, my uh, heroes, I love Harper, uh, he worked in the Obama administration, smart guy, fully geek. He was on an airplane, and he saw a CO2 measurement, a carbon dioxide measurement, nearly of 2,000. And he said, I thought airplane air was supposed to be good. Now, it's important in this era of COVID that there be ventilation on an airplane. So I thought, well, I'm taking a couple of trips. I'm going to go back east next week. I'm going to go to Alaska First Seattle, then Alaska, uh, in a month. So I bought this. This is an Aeronet for about two hundred fifty bucks, and it does it does actually three things. It tells you the CO two parts per million. It tells you the current temperature and the humidity. So it actually is a really good indicator of a comfort level. 
OSHA says the carbon carbon dioxide, which is the what we are exhaling, level in air can be as high as 5,000. After that, you might pass out. <laughs> uh, studies show, in fact, somebody, I was talking about this um, uh, on Saturday, and a listener sent me a uh, very interesting study that showed that, in fact, when the uh, CO2 level reaches as high as 1,000, you lose about 25% of your cognitive ability. 1,500, you're talking about 50% of your cognitive ability. It's a, it's a big, big deal. So I thought, well, I'm going to be on an airplane. I think I'm going to try this. This is the Aeronet 4. I didn't get the Pro version. It does tie to your smartphone, so you can, uh, you can see, uh, you know, on your smartphone, you can see a graph of all the measurements. Uh, it is from aranet.com. I'm not necessarily recommending this, but uh, before I fly, I think I kind of want to know what it's going to be like. And uh, not like I can open a window on the airplane or anything, but, you know, I think it's a good thing to collect. So I have it. And it's 540 uh, parts per million right now, which is very good. By the way, this is something you might want to use in sealed offices, too, because often sealed offices don't add enough fresh air to the mix. Like Maybe that's why I'm always getting tired in sealed offices. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly why. Yeah. Classrooms, you know, um, yep. they don't open the windows. And uh, and the reason airplanes, I think, are so high after, after reading all of this, uh, I think the reason airplanes are so high is because it's not that they're not filtering the air with HEPA filters. So maybe they are taking COVID particles and other viruses out of the air, but they don't want to put in fresh air because it's freezing and, it, and they have to heat it. And it's just it's expensive. It also adds to the drag on the airplane. So it's a costly thing to do. So they limit the amount of fresh air being yeah, mixed and, in. And tanks of oxygen are not a good idea. No, they not start, on an airplane. They start, yeah, they start thinking things, they bad let, things will happen. They could let the outside air in. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not without... Oh, yeah. uh, open a window. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Crack a window. Yeah, a I wish thing. I could. Anyway, um, here it is from uh, Aaronette. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll be, I'll be uh, bringing back pictures of my, uh, of my uh, CO2 level. Uh, it's, like, it's like Andy with his Holstein. You just have to have that little thing around. I could. I have it everywhere. Kinds, all over the world. Here <laughs> yeah. Here's a picture of the restaurant. It was 483. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, when I saw this from Harper, I thought, well, this is going to be a, you know, this is going to be a big issue. Uh, but then I realized, oh, no, they're probably filtering the air. It's just they're not putting fresh air into the air because it's, you know, for energy reasons. And I knew that airplanes did that. So normally this would be a kind of proxy for... Uh, you know, uh, COVID, right? Because ventilation yep. is very closely related, but probably in an airplane, it's not a it's not a perfect proxy. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Era Four, my pick of the week, plus also the Cal Digit. I almost brought that in, and I thought, <laughs> no, I'm never letting it on my site. <laughs> and of course, Planters Cheese Balls or Diablo. Uts. I don't know. And Diablo. And Diablo. Immortal. <laughs> All I need are these abs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. All right, so mine is just 100% uh, absolutely delightful. There's a YouTuber named uh, oh. Patrick H. Willems who did a lot of, like, you do video essays on movies and TV shows. He got really famous by dissecting the color grading of Marvel movies and why he hates it so much. Uh, but he's just, he's a brilliant the uh, film theorist. And during the pandemic, ended up staying, at, like, getting stuck at his parents' place. So he started uh, doing this weird narrative intermix into his essays where a googly-eyed coconut became his best friend. And it turned out over the intervening years that he was a Patrick from an alternate dimension who was a tax evader who had came and replaced our YouTuber, Patrick. And it all built up to now he has done a full length, 90 minute feature <laughs> film on Nebula, which you can, you can just play the trailer, Leo. It's not in content ID. Like it's totally fine for you to oh, play. Oh, thank you. But it is, it is just. <laughs> um, a googly eyed coconut. The star That's of the friend show. Friend of the show, Dave Whiskus, is Dave the agent. Doctor Mike is in there doing physicals. Uh, I am in there. I have a brief cameo oh. in it. So do a bunch of other YouTubers. Uh, Mr. Beast is in it. It is just, I have I, I have not seen something pure fun. Like it's got a little bit of a Kevin uh, a Kevin Smith vibe to it because it's an indie movie and it's got a lot of in you know in in our industry banter and a lot of cameos from people in our industry. But I wasn't sure what to expect. The editing is so good. The storytelling is so funny. Um, 
I just I just enjoyed the 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 ever loving stuff and out of it. It's kind of amazing. Point. Was it shot on an iPhone? No, he is like I, I believe it was shot on on Canon cinema cameras. Oh. I'll have to double check with Patrick on that. But it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it is. It, 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 it's just a complete labor of love, and it astounds me that like going from YouTuber to making stuff like this in a couple of years is just such a like a dream artistic journey for me. The Night of the Coconut, and yes. uh, it's coming to Nebula, or it's on Nebula right now. So if you go it's to on Nebula, Nebula now, yeah. Nebula dot app, you can uh, you can buy the whole. And it's it's movie. got a takeover. There's a whole Charles takeover. Uh, when you, when you log in. <laughs> nice, and of course. Mr. Yeah. Rene Ritchie is also part of the Nebula Fun. Uh, yes, although go watch that movie first. It's just like it's, <laughs> you'll be in a good mood to watch my stuff afterwards. Nice. The Night of the Coconut. Yeah. Yum. You have to be signed in to watch it. Yes. It's an original. So like that's one of the things with originals is they cost a lot to make. So you have to, you have to be signed yeah. in to watch yeah. it. Very cool. Thank you, Rene. Andy Anako, Pick of the Week. Uh, something really kind of fun if you're screwing around with 3D for any reason whatsoever. Uh, Google decided to release a data set of over a thousand really highly detailed scanned 3D models of common household items uh, accompanied with an academic paper that basically says that, hey, we're doing, there's a lot of research being done about like scene composition and robotics, robotic manipulation of objects and simulation. Squirrel. But they, but there aren't like standards for, for, for what objects are we're dealing with. So, hey, we did, we spent a whole a long time uh, scanning a thousand different items. Uh, and so now here's the entire library that you can just basically download and use. And I'm not thinking about using these things for research. I'm thinking <laughs> about just saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool for, for an AR project to simply put this little stuffed uh, plush squirrel like somewhere in the scene of this thing that I'm building? Or it would be nice to do like a 3D print of this Doctor Doom action figure uh, or <laughs> all those other sort of things. It's 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 charming because these objects are so random. Like it really, it really did seem like for a two week period, just they were, this team of people were just bringing in crap from home uh, because they, they've <laughs> They've got like three dozen different kinds of shoes. They've got like boxes of uh, 12, 12 packs of Pepsi, five different flavors. And I'm just, just, just to demonstrate that like they've got all the product packaging correct on all sides. So it is this it is like five different. 12 packs but you got in, in case in case your your robotics model you need well it can lift a 12 pack of diet pepsi but can it do a diet wild cherry pepsi hmm? mm. how about what if what if the artificial sweetener were not to, were not the aspartame it was actually a uh, sucre, could we do actually pepsi max uh, so a lot, a lot of toys a lot of children's toys a lot of consumer products like st even still in their packaging it's worth knowing about because uh, like if you want if you're if you're just setting a scene and you need to have like like, uh, like brick a brack on the shelves. Like you need a couple of vases. You need like a, po a potted plant. Uh, you can probably grab one for free. A, a really, really good detail right here. And yeah, you can download them in two or three different formats. Uh, and yes, SDF is uh, is is among them. Fun. Yeah. Uh, Gazebosim.org. If you want to uh, get your 3D models, thousands of them, absolutely free. Alex Lindsay, pick of the week. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I always think I should drink more water, <laughs> like, but I never do. I never remember it. And and like you, uh, need you know, an some, app. I need an app. The funny thing is, is that it's. I need it. The, the problem for me is that anything with tech will is kind of like the you know putting molasses into my cereal you know, or sugar into the cereal. Like, oh, I'll eat more of that. It's got some tech in it. I, I have something I can measure, you know. And so, so I'm afraid that I I went out and I I wasn't sure if I'd actually use it. So a couple of weeks ago, I got this thing called Hydrate Spark, and I bought it, and it was absurdly it's a expensive smart for, water for what bottle, it does. Ladies and gentlemen, and so here it is. Here it is, and I use it all the time. Oh my! And so so anyway, so the nice thing is, here's the funny thing about it is, I actually and I have the bigger one than those ones. I, I went ahead and I was giant like, I'm at home. Yours looks I really it's big. Giant. It's you have like, the, I don't, the pro, the Titan? Uh, the I think it might be the Titan. The I Titan. think it might be the, I think. Is I it don't, plastic or is it metal? It's metal. Oh, well, then you it's might metal. have the pro, right? Let's see. Yeah, so, I mean, so how, this you is can't how big get it bigger is. than a pro. I would, if I traveled with it, I'd probably get a smaller oh, they one. They have a like 32, I'm, you got the 32 ouncer, that's why. Yeah, yeah. And so I, it's, it's a beast. Yeah. Why didn't you get it pink? You know, you know, that's all, I, that's all I have to say. Now, now here's the, here's the funny thing is, is that so so far I've had this much. This is this is my uh, twenty uh, gallons of water. 
20, 20, 20.5 ounces. Oh, ounces. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is in, in meal, middle of the metric. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure you can set it that way. You can see I crushed it yesterday. So I had, I had <gasps> that. I had 60, 60 ounces. I was <laughs> anyway. And anyway, so, and then if I, if I, um, if I, if I take a drink, so if I just go like, I'm actually tempted. It's not, it's only $80. Mm. Is it, is the installation good? I mean, and then you it, set it down. The installation is excellent. So it stays I mean, cold it's, it's, or hot. It's the best water. So then what it does is it'll flash here. Let's see if it usually. Can you put the vodka bottom. in it is the question. You can, you can. That could probably actually control <laughs> your intake. So, so the bottom, the bottom will glow. And now you can see, I just took a swig of three, three ounces. <laughs> and, and so anyway, and the funny thing is, so the bottom glows is this is the part you kind of charge and you every once in a while, I don't know, I haven't charged it yet, but I, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'm going to have to at some point be like, I keep on drinking water and it's not measuring. And I'll know that I have to plug it in. So the, um, uh, but the, the thing about it is, is it's not just that it's a geeky kind of thing. It is a geeky kind of thing. It's a really well, it's like the best water bottle I bought. The water doesn't taste like anything. Did you get the chug or the forever. straw? Which did you, I guess, which uh, did, did you opt for? I might I, get the I, straw. I think it's the chug. I think it's the chug I got, yeah. which I like a lot. Boy, I can't it's, decide it's if a, I want a chug or a straw. I'm number for water. Yeah, it's, I'm torn. It's, it's really good. And, and it's, um, again, I'm, here's the worst part, uh, I may buy the smaller one for when I travel because I, I went to LA last week for a couple of days and I um and I didn't take it so now I have two days that have no data which is very upsetting <gasps> for me. But but the um is that the but worst? I, you know, your quantified <laughs> self has a gap. I know exactly, and so so anyway, so so but it's it's um. It actually, I, I, I know that I'm drinking more water and I know that I feel better, and that should be enough to get me to drink more water without the cup, but it. It's not the same. And, and again, I think that part of what makes it work is that it's not that it's a bad cup with a measurement tool. It's actually the best water jug I've ever had. For 80 bucks, it better be. You know, it like, glows. you know, but, but it's, it, yeah, it, it glows, glows at the bottom. It glows in the bottom. Yeah. I'm getting the yeah. bright pink one. Are you kidding? Yeah, there you go. And, 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 and it's, but it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a cool, it's, it's a really, it, again, I, I'm going to probably get another one for when I travel. I don't know how two of them fit into this and whether it matches them or not. <laughs> I mean, that's the only problem I have is I don't know if I have to tell it that I'm using the smaller one. I don't, I don't, I haven't figured that part out yet, but, but it's a, it's a, it's a, again, if, if it was without the measurement tool, I would still use it because it's, it's a really comfortable one. The chug one at least are, is a really comfortable. I thought the straw was going to be weird. So I just bought the chug. I'm one. getting the straw. It did take me. I just want to point out if you're looking at it, I'm not that smart. I'm not a very smart person. It took me a long time to figure out how to open it. I kept on going, trying to go like this. <laughs> I'm just going to save you some time. You just, if you push it down like this, that red bar means it oh, won't open. For an additional $10, you can have a chug <laughs> lid and a straw. And there you go. And then you have, the key is push the bottom part and it just pops open. <laughs> but when it when you finally do that, you I, I, I guess I've taken away the the feeling of accomplishment that you might have there that you sat there for a day or two trying to figure out how to turn the, open the thing. <laughs> So anyway, I, 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 I don't actually believe you need to keep track of how much you drink water you drink, maybe vodka, but not water. You know, you just drink <laughs> when you're thirsty, you'll be fine. I still want it. <laughs> it's really cool. I still it glows want every it. time you get you get the positive it glows reinforcement. When you it drink? Glows every time you have it, every time you have oh, a drink, man. about ten seconds later it goes, Oh, oh you know, man. like it's yeah. it rewards you. Yeah. Does it sigh? It doesn't sign until the end of the day when you when you only are at like thirty two. It's like when you say when you, when you, when, it, when it's obvious you're going to bed. It goes <sighs> sigh. <Yeah>. I tried. <laughs> I tried to make him drink more. I'm like I can't drink anymore at this time of day, or I'll have to get up in the middle of the night. I kind of want this. I don't. It's I don't really need it's, it. You don't need it. I didn't need it, but I am drinking a lot more water, and I feel a lot better. I think I have better skin. <laughs> So, uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, you know, Good. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The truth is, the other reason I need it. Yesterday, I, I have a bubba, which is just a you know thing with a straw in it, and I made a made up a nice thirty two ounce bubba with my vitamin C in it and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and I spilled it on the carpet immediately. Right. And it was such right. a sad thing, you know. I and I here they won't let me do that, so I have a Contigo, but uh, oh, yeah. it doesn't this glow is, and it doesn't know. I know. This thing yeah. glows and it knows. It glows and it knows. Yeah, there you go. I, you should send that to marketing. Then, then. <laughs> I, just, send you. I just bought it. <laughs> I'm such a sucker. <laughs> You're worse than Instagram, Alex. <laughs> All good. right. Hydrate. I H spelled H-I-D-R-A-T-E spark dot com. Alex is going to do an Ask Me Anything in our club twit July 14th. 
Yep. Very excited about that. Nice. That's one of many things. We make Club Twit fun. Uh, you merely give us $7 a month, a couple of Starbucks, that's it. And we give you ad-free versions of all the shows, which shortens their length considerably. We give you access to our fabulous Discord, which is full of fun and games and animated gifts and events. We had Stacy's Book Club the other day. It was so much fun. I'm going to do that. Uh, we're voting right now on the next book. Uh, interviews with interesting people. Coming up, a fireside chat on the 28th. Uh, I just, and then of course the Twit Plus feed, which has stuff that doesn't make it to the podcast, including our Untitled Linux show, The Giz Fizz, The Book Club. We launch new shows there like This Week in Space, thanks to the generosity of our club members. We'd love to have you in the club. Would you join us? All you have to do is go to twit.tv slash club twit. There's annual uh, memberships as well as monthly, and there's corporate memberships there too. And Alex Lindsay will be there in a couple of weeks. I will not be here next week. Um, what 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 is going on next week? Do we know who's going to take over for me? Do we know how that's going to work? Is Micah going to be here? I, I They've told me many times, but psh, it's out. Uh, too many cheese balls. I don't have any memory anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway, it'll be a great show, uh, and I will be back in two weeks. Uh, Alex Lindsay is at officehours.global every morning talking about cool stuff like... Today we had a data, a data video on. They, they have built these little uh, VPN things. A lot of us are doing remote production. And they, um, they built, uh, basically it builds a VPN to a remote site. So you, you can have these little things and it just does it on the web. A lot of us have had to build all this stuff and you have to figure out how to set it all up. Just plug them into the internet once they're set up and they just, they, they get into, they basically feel like they're in the same place and it lets us run of all of our equipment on the other side. So, you know, and, and it's, it's really kind of what happens a lot in our group is that, is that something bubbles up, you know, someone buys it, a whole bunch of people talk about it and then we're like, well, let's bring them on and have them talk to us about it. And, nice. you know, someone's decided this is cool. And so it's a very, uh, you know, um, very democratic thing, you know, in, in the sense that members just start suggesting stuff and we throw it up there. So, so that, that was one of the, the things we're covering, but every day it's, it's always something we're always having a good time. <laughs> second, second hours and the first hours, uh, just, just a lot of, a lot of great questions and a lot of great answers. And, I think we've pushed Zoom about as far as it can go. If you look at the thing, there's, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, everyone's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a thing. It's really so, impressive anyway. what you've done uh, with it's a lot of fun. Yeah, officehours.global, open to all. And of course, if you're looking to get Alex to host your next, not host, uh, help stream your next event. Although I'm sure Alex will be glad to host it too. 90 <laughs> dot media is his day job. When are you going to be on WGBH next, Mr. Andy Anaka? I'm off this week, but I'm going to be on again Thursday at uh, 1250, 1250. Go to WGBHnews.org to stream it live or later. Thank you. And maybe we can get together when I'm uh, out your way. I hope so. I might, be, be, I might even be broadcasting from the Boston Public Library. Oh, if you're doing that, I'll come up on Thursday. That'd be fun. I'd love to see you do that. I'll let you, I'll let you know, but I'll yes, definitely. I will, yeah. I, will, I, will, I, will make, I will make time for you, absolutely. Oh, you sweetie. Renee Ritchie. YouTube.com slash yes, Renee Ritchie. He's the star. Uh, also a Nebula broadcaster, nebula.app. What are you working on? Uh, I just put up an M2 versus uh, M1 oh, Pro. That's what video. I A lot of people watch. were confused about that. That's what and I And I did watch. a pass key versus passwords because people were super confused about how, pa like the, how pass keys actually are implemented and how they're secured and all that. So I, I did a full explainer on all the aspects. Everything you possibly want to know and more about pass keys. The world needs that. Yes. Thank you, Renee. We appreciate your being here. Micah Sargent will be in this seat next week, taking over uh, the show for me. Uh, I will be back in two weeks. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. Stop by and say hi. You can watch us do it live at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat live at irc.twit.tv. Uh, of course, there's also the Discord for members of the club. After the show's over, we put up an edited version uh, at the website, twit.tv slash mbw. We also put it on YouTube. There's a dedicated Mac Break Weekly channel. And you can subscribe because it is a podcast and get it automatically the minute it's available. I hope you will do one of those because we like it when you watch. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work because break time is over. Is that an iPhone in your hand? Wait a second. Is that an Apple Watch on your wrist? And... 
do I, do I see an iPad sitting there on the table? Oh my goodness. You are the perfect person to be watching iOS today. The show where Rosemary Orchard and I, Micah Sargent talk all things iOS, tvOS, watchOS, HomePod OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer. And we show you how to make the most of those gadgets. Just head to twit.tv slash iOS to check it out.